It is a beautiful day in north central Alabama. It is uh, sunscreen weather. Packed house. Time to get on the feet, ladies and gentlemen. Go time. And remember, the start finish here is not in the middle of the trioval as it is at Talladega's sister track in Daytona. It's down past the exit of Pitt Road, and that will make a difference. The other thing it does for me, you know, when you get up here, again, different perspective from being in that car, but the restart zone is in the trioval. It's not back there coming off at of turn four. Fans to their feet. Coming to the center of the trioval, right there, and there is the Geico restart zone. And now they address themselves to the starting line. Green flag, the Geico 500 is underway. Got them teammates paired up on both sides. Going to be interesting to watch this Christopher Bell. How will he get down there? I think he's going to maybe, well, he might just keep going here. Might see him pairing up with his teams down low. Yeah, left hand is. turn right there. We saw that coming. We heard him talk in the pre-race show about how they real the Toyota drivers have talked about really working together in this race. So I, I feel like that's something you're gonna see with that group pretty quick. Be interesting to watch because there's safety in numbers. There's a lot more Fords and Chevrolets than there are Toyotas in this race. See Priest going to the back. I don't know if he got shuffled out or he's got a problem here. Inside, third one lane. His teammate, Eric Almarola, leads lap one. Four Fords on point. Stuart Haas Fords on the inside, first and second. There's a Penske and an RFK Ford on the outside, first and second. Yeah, you got to make a choice. Where are we going to be? We want to go to the bottom and lead this pack. You know, we're talking about Al Marola. Um, had him. We were, oh. oh, that is That's Michael McDowell. McDowell spinning after we saw what looked like fluid or perhaps dust coming off that car in turn four. And caution is out. Right, rear's down. I don't, all right, it might just be broke. I bet it broke the toe link when he hit the wall. No, it's down. It may have blown that tire. I, I yeah, I, I think the that. tow link looks okay. It, the wheel's not moving around, just the tire's flat. First caution of the day comes on lap two. Top of your screen. Tire. It's Michael McDowell.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? And by DoorDash. Long-standing tradition here at Talladega, Johnny Ray's semi-trailer hauling the American flag. His son Kevin drives it now. Michael McDowell radioed in that something broke in the right rear. Josh? Yeah, Mike, and that's the case for the 34. They're concerned something might have broke on that right rear. They're going to come back down to pit road to check it out to see if it's a tow link, but they said that tire is a full rotation off, so some concern early for the 34 team. Let's check with Larry Mack on uh, today's Verizon race strategy. Yeah, Mike, a lot of things pretty important here. If you have to make a green flag pit stop, which we did two last spring, stop with other cars, with teammates, maybe with drivers within your manufacturer. Depending on how the cautions fall, run each stage as far as possible on fuel, somewhere probably 36 to 38 laps. And we've said it and said it, track position outweighs fresh tires. Don't be afraid to change just two tires, possibly fuel only. Well, you calling it. There's a lot of cars coming down pit road right now, topping this baby off, taking advantage of this early caution coming out. A lot of fuel only stops from about the, right about the middle of the pack on back. And the question would be, why are they doing that? The, the, the reason for that is they're just trying to extend that pit window, just like what Larry talked about. You want to go as long as you can. The longer you can stay out and that group, the, this whole group that pitted will most likely pit together at the end of this cycle now. You see they're got some bolts and parts and pieces out. I think that's a tow link area, Larry. Looks like they might be replacing that. Just don't know how in the world that thing would have broke like that. We just really had gotten up to speed to start the race. But you're right. That's exactly what they're possibly working on. Well, let's remember no practice at Talladega for these cars. Uh, the only time they've been on track was for their single lap of qualifying in round one, in most cases, and round two for the 10 fastest qualifiers. It'll be interesting to see Josh is down there. he give us a better idea here in a minute. But I think what would be neat is finding out if it's actually broke or if they True. just changed it to preventative because it did hit the wall. They might just take this That's time right. and change that. That's link. a good point, Tony. I, I honestly, if it's been or something, I would have thought it's from hitting the wall. I just thought it cut a tire down, maybe run over something. Um, you know, that's that's more than likely what I thought it was. Point is, that is a, a favorite. Yes. Michael McDowell is one of the favorites on Super Speedways. Great plate racer. And I do believe that that car is not damaged bad enough to hurt him. I think he'll be just fine. Get back in this draft and he'll be a player in this. Well, he's about to lose a lap here uh, as they come around. Not very often you spin in the middle of a pack and nobody hits you. But now losing a lap at this stage of the race, not a big problem. He'll be the only car one lap down. So the next caution should put him right back uh, back on course. Hopefully that's what he's hoping as well at this point. Well, you just hope whatever is broke or bent they're working on. It's a replaceable part. Man, as soon as that thing jumped sideways, we were talking to Chase Elliott, a lot of sun, hot out there. These cars should be, you know, you, you could see it in the qualifying that we saw. Some cars went for the speed, got these babies trimmed out. Other cars got a little drag in them or a little bit slower. I think that's going to play a role later on in the race. So Michael McDowell having problems. Perhaps it is the rear toe link. Let's take a closer look with Larry Mack and the Toyota cutaway car. Yeah, let's go into our Toyota Tech Center. We hear the word tow link a lot. So let's look at our Toyota cutaway car. There's one on the left rear and there's one on the right rear. And it's really just a small rod. It's almost like a mini a tie rod that's in the rear of the car. It's how the teams adjust the rear toe. But it is the weakest link in the rear of the car, which sometimes having something weak like that is good. Two bolts is what holds it in. But Clint asked me a couple of weeks ago, why do we see sometimes people with torches out there? Sometimes it bends so bad, you have to cut it before you can get the bolts out. Thanks, Larry. Now, uh, Chase Briscoe, you remember, uh, he broke a finger in his hand. Yes, that finger on his left hand uh, and has run uh, two races with that. He did have surgery on it Monday. How's he doing? Definitely wrong on the finger. By far the hardest track so far. 10 4 is anything we can give you? Come in here and just let us know. Like with the vibration and everything else, like it's a 
Robin the whole time. I don't know if it's here. I got more time to think about it, too, than a Martinsville or Bristol Dirt, but it's definitely noticeable here. That's exactly what I think it is. Once you get out there under green, you get to work, and the drilling gets to pumping. I was surprised at Bristol when he broke it. I talked to him the next day, and that thing was, it looked bad. It was all swelled up. looked like it hurt. Um, finished, he ran that dirt race that night, ran the feature, and then raced two races without it. Got that surgery this weekend. Tough cat. Ready for the restart. Third race led this season for Eric Almarola. He's led on all three drafting tracks. Daytona, Atlanta, and now Talladega as they come to the Geico Restart Zone. Half to the four seed behind him. Has it taken old Joey Logano long to get to the front of this thing? Such a good plate racer. Aggressive, always attacking. Not a lot of patience in his driving, and he's extremely good at managing runs. If he gets to the point, he's a hard one to get around. They Absolutely. do a great job of moving, slow and stalling out lines. That's why I say he is, I feel like he is one of the best restrictor plate racers in the series right now. To your point, as soon as he gets the lead, he knows how to manage the race. Him and his spotter do such a great job working together, knowing when the block runs, get that momentum, keep yourself up there. Well, that's just it. You talked about it. knowing when a uh, block runs. You know, his spotter, Coleman Presley, it is so important to be in tune with that spotter. You have to. When he says down, that means now. That doesn't mean check your mirror and look and see if it's okay. Double check his work. You have to go now. You guys have to be in sync because these moves, they happen. That winning moment when you come off of turn four, if you're not on top of it, you see late blocks and misses like you saw yesterday in the Xfinity race that wipes out a bunch of cars. Backstretch energy on the outside with the Toyotas of Wallace and Gibbs. Now they're even as they come back to the trioval. Josh? Yeah, and you guys asked for an update on the 34. Well, when they came in, they looked at the tow link. There was no issue with the tow link. It wasn't broken, so they put a new tire on. They went back out. They said the tire is still off where it needs to be. They'd go back out, see if they can meet minimum speed, which they have. But still, you see where they are in the pack. Some issues for the 34, and they still don't know exactly what caused that tire to go down. Yeah, he's a lap down, and he is out of the draft as the leaders hit the back stretch. There it is. How about Bubba Wallace? Going to the front, that man right there likes what he sees. Cool to see Michael Jordan at these racetracks. I think he was everybody's hero growing up. Well, Glued to the TV when he was on that court. Well, Michael's dad was a big NASCAR fan. He was growing up in Wilmington, North Carolina. His dad would take him to a lot of the races throughout the Southeast. And uh, he grew up a NASCAR fan. I think it's fun because he knows how to build championship teams. I mean, he's done that for years in basketball, dabbled in baseball for a little while, but he knows how to be a part of championship winning teams and successful organizations. Well, I think it's his work ethic, his demand. You know, you, you watch documentaries and things on the basketball player, the, the athlete he was, he, he expects that out of everybody. And I think it leads right over into his NASCAR program as well. Briscoe bringing the inside line back even and a little bit ahead. Finger doesn't hurt Robert now, huh? Doesn't hurt Still quite as bad. <laughs> Still by half to the 10, he kind of struggles through the trial. See, all that information, that's what a good spotter can tell you. Struggles a little bit in a trioval. Those are things that memory bank. You've got to log these laps and log those memories, putting it all to work when the time's right. And also with that, they will they will remember that later in the race. They'll remember this guy was struggling on the inside or this guy was struggling on the outside. They'll pick the weaknesses and the strengths of each of these cars that they're around and then try to get with those cars that complemented their car at the end of the race. Exactly. Check that out. Keep an eye on that later. Up pretty good right now. Corey LaJoy got kicked up high and out of the draft down in turn one, uh, or not out of the draft, but out of the pack. He is now the caboose on this train. 
Yeah, easy to do. You can lose the draft uh, very easily. We learned that right off the bat. I remember at Daytona for the 500, we were down there. Kevin Harvick, as a matter of fact, lost the draft. And he was like, we were all, what's wrong, man? What's wrong? He goes, hey, I just wasn't paying attention and just didn't pull up to him. I thought it would and, and lost it. And we'll see threats of that through the day. I mean, especially this first run with no practice. The more we get, more laps we get under our belt, the more handling these guys are going to figure out what their balance is. But if they drop to the back, trying to protect it till they get to a pit stop, that is the risk they take going to the back is making sure that you stay close enough to the cars in front of you that you don't lose it. If you lose it, you cannot gain it back. Coming around to complete 13 laps, one caution flag so far, single car spin of Michael McDowell. Chase Briscoe and Bubba Wallace lead in Talladega. Best coat to watch racing with? Well, you need to try it first. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Entertained. He sure did. Had him on B. That was an awesome show. Did a great job. I love Cole Swindell for the simple fact alone, he's a big race fan. Huge NASCAR fan. Always at these races, hanging out with his buddies, taking in a race. And Talladega is certainly one of his favorites. Well, we are between Carolina and California after all. That's right. <laughs> Ford's on the bottom, Toyota's up top. Uh, the first two cars in each lane at least. And aside from one or two cars getting kicked out of line and to the back, this has been a very orderly procession at 192 miles an hour. Well, it's orderly, but don't think there's, you know, don't mistake that there's not stuff going on. I was talking about with, with this uh, Larry under the brake, you're saving fuel. If you're not that lead car, obviously Bubba Wallace on the outside, Chase Briscoe on the inside, they have to be wide open in the front of those packs leading the pack. You go back there further in the pack, Larry, you're lifting and saving my man some fuel. Yeah, I'm looking right now at the two guys on the front row there, Chase Briscoe in the 14, Bubba Wallace in the 23. 
100% throttle all the way around this track. Ryan Blaney, the 12 car, the third car in the outside line, he's anywhere from about 50 to 70%. It's almost like the deeper we went into this run, he's using less throttle. And right now on my fuel calculations, he can go about four laps further than like Bubba Wallace can right now because Bubba's wide open. 50% throttle, half throttle. There you see it. Look at Ty Gibbs, second car on the outside line. Now he's feathering that throttle to stay close, but maybe not too close to Bubba Wallace. Well, he's doing that. Look at the brake right here. You're feathering the throttle so you don't have to climb all over the brakes and burn the brakes off of it. Jamie? Least amount of experience right there in that front pack is the 54 at Ty Gibbs. He had a great qualifying effort, qualified third, his best of his career. Their biggest concern, though, coming in was not getting hung out. And that means that the veteran drivers around you don't trust you. They don't want to run in the pack with you because of that yellow bumper. But he's doing everything right. Obviously has a fast car, so those around him staying with him. Well done so far. So here's our Xfinity fastest lap of the race so far. B.J. McLeod, who joined us in the booth for uh, much of qualifying yesterday, uh, started this race at the back, but he has the fastest lap. Now, how does that happen? Well, when you have a pack this big and you come to the line, maybe a couple of car lengths behind everybody and have a good suck up lap, you're faster than everybody else, right? That's exactly right. I mean, getting that gap in the back, normally if you can start that lap a little bit behind and then close in during the whole lap, that's going to get you that big lap time. And we talked about, you know, Kevin Harvey, you heard me say, you can't get too far back, you'll lose that draft. There's no worse feeling when you're trying to manage that. You're back there in the pack, you're riding. That's your strategy. I'm going to ride back here. I'm going to survive. If they wreck, I want to be back far enough uh, uh, behind them that I can get loaded up. I can get stopped and miss the wreck, right? But if you get too far out and lose that draft, you're in big trouble. The other thing is three wide. The bigger that hole is in front of you, the faster you're going to go. They can go three wide to two wide. Uh-oh, now they're single file. I'm in trouble. Yeah, if you're that last car and you're by yourself, there's nobody beside you, the best place to be is right in the middle. They're punching that hole. Aim for the center of the biggest hole. Bubba Wallace out front. He's led twice as many laps today as for the entire season so far. Big Doesn't. opportunity for him. And he's taken full advantage of it. Obviously a very fast race car. Good, a, a good super speedway racer. Knows how to get it done. Been in victory lane here. You know, I'm looking at Chase Briscoe's car and it says the old goat on the hood. What could that possibly refer to? <laughs> Well, if you, if you let him come around just a little bit further, that old goat's got a robe on and all sorts of stuff. What, what is going on there, Tony? Hey, we had so much fun with Mahindra doing the commercial shoots this year that they wanted to put me on the side of the car, which is a terrible idea of all places to bring me. I mean, here's a good shot. I'm going to get scuffed up today. Well, the good thing, the new Tony, you, you only took a little bit of the quarter panel. The old Tony, you, you needed to move around to the hood. So the good news is... You're headed in the right direction, buddy. There you go. That Tony on the <laughs> side there could use a shave. Maybe yeah. somebody will brush up against it and give you one. And a lot of farm and them ahead of tractors. A lot of farms and a lot of them tractors in the fields right now. Getting them crops in the ground. 22 laps complete this time by Bubba Wallace, Chase Briscoe, Ty Gibbs, Ryan Blaney, and Eric Almirola, the top five.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express card. 25 laps complete, Bubba Wallace in command. Ryan Blaney up to second now, and Martin Truex third. Gibbs fourth, Daniel Suarez has worked his way up to fifth. Chase Briscoe has dropped in in sixth, uh, where he can save some fuel for a while now. Starting to approach a fuel window. I'm gonna say you might start to see these guys finding their, their group too. If we're gonna be pitting under green here, you're gonna see a manufacturer start pulling down and, and probably coming together, strength in numbers. As we've said, lots of Fords, lots of Chevrolets. They make up the bulk of the field. There are only six Toyotas, and there are three up near the front and three back from about 14th on. They're gonna have to find each other uh, to pit together, being safety in numbers coming off pit road. Look at this. So McDowell, he's going to go two laps down right here, and you started to see his teammate back there. He's going to pull up maybe and try to push him up. It's important to not go two laps down. You talked about it, Mike. One lap is doable. You can get that back two laps. You're going to need some help. Something's going to have to happen, a quick caution, an untimely caution for you to do that. So it does not surprise me that those teammates picked him up right there. Can't lose another lap. So, Larry, for the 20 cars that did not stop on lap four at the only caution flag so far, when would we expect them on pit road? Yeah, I mean, Mike, the fuel window is north of 40 laps, but normally they play it a little more conservative, again, depending on how much park throttle, full throttle. I would say based on going back and watching the spring race last year, once we get to about lap 36 to 38, that's probably when you're going to see these guys starting to come to pit road. Well, thanks, Larry. Riding with Joey Logano, the Coca-Cola Zero Sugar Cam. He is sitting in 11th place here. No reason to hit me right now. That's veteran talk right there. Uh, Joey knows that there's it's risk versus reward. The reward of getting that push from Busher isn't really a reward at this point. There's nowhere for him to go forward. They're logging laps right now. Big Ooh. block there by oh. Bubba Wallace. That was a door slam. There but was that's not a lot of gap there. And we'll see a lot more of that as the day goes on, but that's how you manage the energy of these lines like we saw at Daytona. You've got to sit there and know when there's a line that picks up, picks that 12 car up a Blaney and look just motoring back up front. That's also, and I talk about this a lot, you know, there's different strategies. You can go to the back. I'm going to ride around and, and, and try to be there at the end, survive the weather the storm, if you will. Those guys up there practicing these blocks, being in sync with one another, when the time is right and it comes down to the end of that thing, you need that practice and be together as one. How about this shot of the field from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear? Powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between, Goodyear more driven. And that is important at this stage of the race. You would sit there and go, wow, why, why did he make that move like that? Remember, no practice. You don't, get, you don't get an hour of practice or an hour and 45 minutes of practice to practice these moves and figure out exactly what you have to do at the end of the day. So trying it now and trying to not do it in an unsafe spot or, or untimely spot, but you got to figure these things out and it's trial and error. Listen to Noah Gregson right here working that throttle. You know, he can easily just run up and, and you know, nail the, the back of Reddick in front of him, keeping that, that car off of that bumper all with the throttle. A couple of veterans have advanced to the rear. Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick, the six and the four, kind of riding out back. Thirty one laps complete. Let's take a break before pit stops. Bubba Wallace, Daniel Suarez for the lead. Ryan Blaney, Kyle Busch, Harrison Burton up in the top five.
This is right across the street from Talladega Super Speedway. It's the quarter mile dirt, Talladega short track. They ran 360 sprinters two nights. Ricky Stenhouse won both. And they ran the dirt late models where Red Farmer finished second and Kyle Larson eighth. They were yeah. separate races, by the way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> different different classes. Thank you. Dennis yeah, that was Suarez. Like, ran an over and won that. They had 50,000 to win they had over there. Wow. That's a big show. Had all the big boys there. I think you're going to start seeing these guys pitting. Get them guns ready. Fuel cans, we're ready. Here's some Bubba Wallace audio. If he's an adjustment or whether he's good. If he's good, I'm all on it. Be a little bit tighter. One number tighter. Oh, Reddick. Spins out and hits the wall. Turns it around and keeps going. Oh my gosh, did not see that coming, Tony. Neither did he. Too much rear brake in that thing. Right here, Lost it. Right here. Nope. We're and, still green. And Bubba Wallace was the one that did an amazing job of not getting collected up in that. Well, I saw him come flying around the outside of him. I was like, man, Bubba checked up way too much. I was wrong. Reddick overshot it. Well, I think Bubba was smart there. He did lose a spot or two there, but the biggest thing that you can have happen right now is a penalty, a speeding penalty or, or uncontrolled tire, just no penalties, nice, clean, smooth stops. Well, we talked about it. You said very important to come in collected together. You heard Mike talk about there's only six of these Toyotas. Now, because of that, it really split up that line. They're going to be headed out there, not together, and are going to lose even more time. So they are in turn two. They have formed up four of them, drafting, getting back up to speed as the leaders enter turn one. They actually waited for one another over through three and four and got that line, got the chain connected. They were not that connected and situated, but here they come, coming fast. Those cars are going to have to get going here, and they will. Now, when they pitted, Kyle Busch was the leader. Ross Chastain has now gone to the front. What's significant about Chastain taking the lead is he and Eric Jones right behind them were two of the cars. Ty Dillon, another one in the 77. That stopped for fuel at lap four. They fought their way all the way up through the field. I still think they stay on plan here. We have the now we have the track position, though. They're going to I bet when the others pit, they'll come with them. Ryan Priest was another. Uh, who stopped at lap four. There's the Hunt Brothers pizza cam on Priest's number 41, who led 130 laps last week at Martinsville. Uh, we listened in on the 45 that spun coming to pit road. Manny panicked. He's trying to get down with the Toyotas. I thought he got turned, and he just absolutely locked up and spun out. Ew, like I told him, don't panic. Like, we don't need to get down. We'll pit with the next one. And he just tried to get down and spun himself out. That's trying to come from the outside lane. Man, that was so close. I think that was Chase Briscoe. Barely missed him when he came down. He was late to the party. Looked to me like. Hard to believe that was just a single car incident and that there's no damage apparent to his car. Whoa. That was so close. But I think it's important to note that that's what's going to be important about this pit cycle. All these cars that are in the, in the on the outside lane, when it's their turn to pit, they can't wait till the lap that they want to come in. They've got to start trying to find a hole and work themselves down. That pack was so tightly formed, though, Tony. How does Reddick get down to the low lane if there's no gap? Well, you start the quest earlier. That's how you do it. You don't wait till the last minute or you catch yourself in trouble. And then you out of desperation. That's exactly what has to happen. And oh, no. And now you see I've those left this. hands out the window, too. That's how you're signaling to those drivers. Hey, I'm I'm getting ready to pit. I need to get down to this inside line. And everybody's aware of that. Everybody kind of has to work together in this scenario. But they don't have to let you in. It ain't no. their job to let you in either. They don't have to. But if they keep somebody from getting down the next time in the next cycle, you might be the guy on the outside and you might need that break. So it's it's a matter, matter of courtesy and etiquette. Now, here are most of the Chevrolets pitting as a group, Josh. Yeah, let's start with the one of Ross Chastain, who already pit for fuel earlier on in the race. They're only going to get fuel this time around. His biggest concern has been just the bumps out there on the track. Jamie? Kyle Busch in the eight on the right side said he's happy with the car. No adjustments, obviously no time for that either. Just fuel the 99. Daniel Suarez already led a couple laps here today. Fuel only for him. That's a land rush coming off pit road. Under green. Those last three are in jeopardy right yes. here in that group of not staying connected to that pack. There's the Toyota group trying to stay on the lead lap here. 
And that's exactly how the Toyota camp, because of Reddick's spin, came off of pit road. They were really disconnected, but they all made the conscious effort. Spotters probably up high said, hey, check up, get this thing connected. We're going to be better. If we leave him out, we're going to be in trouble. Now, of the cars that have not yet stopped in this cycle, they are mostly Fords. However, there are seven Chevys uh, that have not stopped. And you see the 41 at the map at the top of your screen. That is the leader, Ryan Priest, the Toyota group, led by Bubba Wallace, the 23, and the Chevy group, led by the nine. There's that wave Harvey. by Harvick. We're coming. Fords are coming. Coming this time. Excuse me, that was Ryan Priest. Out of here if you can. Don't spot him. Don't slide him. Not taking tires. Whoa! Around goes Briscoe! Same exact thing. Right. Everybody gets by, and we at. are still green it. as he fires it up. Regan. Mike, you see the 22 of Joey Logano, that race car. Decent for him. Needs an adjustment, though, when cars are behind him too squirmy. The 41 of Ryan Priest, after getting shuffled out early on in the race, has been very good since then. Something's broke on the right front. It's down. Car's on the ground. Tires are spinning. It yeah. won't roll. That is going to bring out a caution. Yeah, the right front's locked up. So the Fords exit pit road. Oh, no, now, they're, now you're going to blow the rears. I believe this will be a caution. And Priest is trying to get the car off of pit road without success. Now he's got plenty of time. Uh, Briscoe, excuse me, Briscoe, before the field comes around. He's got plenty of time if he can get that car to roll. He's yeah, not, it's not going anywhere. Yellow that out, right side, out. there it is, yellow's out. Pressure. Caution, waves. Second one of the day. The right front's definitely where the issue is. Well, we know the left rear tire's shredded. We can see that. That's not the problem, though. <laughs> exactly. There it is. Right front on the ground for Chase Briscoe, who spins coming to pit road.
Pit road is open. Here come the six cars that had not stopped yet under green. Regan. Well, Ty Dillon in the 77 car, happy with the race car, said things are good in here. They wanted to try and get on pit road, but they saw the 14 spinning down there in the 31 car of Justin Haley. They plan to run long right from the start of the race. Josh? Well, the 43 of Eric Jones is okay with that car so far right now. Just set a little bit free everywhere as far as the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. They came in for four tires of fuel. Jamie? Ty Gibbs in the 54, remember the Toyotas came and they took fuel only, so he said, I would love to get four tires here. So it'll be four tires that tear up to help that vision, a drink of water and fuel for the 54. Free pass will go to Tyler Reddick. Remember, he had trouble getting onto pit road when the Toyotas made their green flag stop and went a lap down. So he will be back on the lead lap when we restart. Chase Briscoe. Spins to pit road, the right front cuts down, and the car won't move. We're under caution. USFL action continues tonight on FS1. The Michigan Panthers take on the Philadelphia Stars 7 Eastern on FS1. 45 laps complete in the Geico 500 at Talladega. Second caution of the day. This one for Chase Briscoe. And we've got a new leader. Chase Elliott who was uh, hanging out toward the back at much of this green flag run. There are the three Hendrick Chevrolets three of the four in positions one two three and here's the Coca Cola racing family updated with Chase in the lead Daniel Suarez fifth Joey Logano seventh Austin Dillon 16th and Denny Hamlin who pitted with the rest of the Toyotas Regan on Chase Briscoe's mishap 
Well, Mike, we saw him down there spinning and couldn't seem to get that car to roll forward. Looked like the right front maybe was locked up. The team just told me it was just because it was on the splitter so hard he couldn't get the car to go forward to get down to the pit box to him. That's what caused the problem. They came back in, check and make sure everything was good. Everything was good on the right front now. Well, everybody was trying to get down to pit road speed, uh, but Briscoe whipped around the outside of Noah Gregson and then the right front went down. Yeah, you see the splitter down on the ground and just won't go. He's the first red car. Yeah, you see, just starts gaining speed. I'd say the wheels started locking up, and then he had to lift off the brakes, Tony, to probably get the car back under control. Then he almost ran over Noah Gregson. and now you're in big trouble. The, the moral of the story of all this, he had zero shot at getting down to pit road speed. Does a good job of getting his hand off the wheel and protecting his hand right now, but just that mistake is just, a mis it's just truly that, it's a mistake, but it should not happen. The first stop of the day, error on the caution side. You know, take it easy and make sure you get but through that stop clean, and then you can press if you need to go. On both of them as well, both yes. scenarios. You know, Reddick two, very aggressive race car drivers, a little bit of patience on that first run, no practice. What do we have here? I think I showed it earlier, the brakes, the fact that you're not running brakes out there. Brakes are cold, they tend to lock up a lot easier. Now the Toyotas all stopped together, so at the caution flag they were all together in the back. What's Ty Gibbs' strategy? We're all far enough back. There's probably not a chance of getting into stage point positions in the next 15 laps before the end of the stage, so we're just kind of going to take care of our fuel, take care of our car, and then we'll be able to flip the stage because we just put it there for four, you know, jump as many positions as we can. Yeah, all right. Reminder to that rookie driver. All right. Don't be going up there and getting this car tore up. We're in this thing for the long haul, in it for the end. Six Chevys, then four Fords, leading them to the Geico restart zone. Chase Elliott chooses the inside, Alex Bowman outside, Larson, Chastain, Suarez, and Byron. One's right on, you the fives off the 48. That's Chase Elliott's spotter ready to hunt. Still on it now, off just a little. Back on, the five is on the 48. Little bit off, five's off the 48. It's gonna be game on here. Now you've got guys that are needing these playoff points. Not gonna see a lot of patience. I think they're gonna go for the valuable for a lot of reasons. Obviously, playoff picture at the end, winning this stage is huge. And collecting some stage points in case somehow, some way down to the end of this race, if you get caught up in a wreck, you've got some points here gained for a buffer. And I really thought that outside line was gonna get a big run versus the inside line. We saw going into turn three on the back stretch, the nine, the one, the 24, a lot of separation. And that one car is kind of in an accordion effect. He got, the nine got away from him, it backed him up to the 24, the 24 gave him a big push. But until they kind of get settled in a rhythm, like you see this outside line, it's hard to really build and generate that energy on that line. About the tandem. Actually hooked up. I saw it a little bit with Chastain and Elliott on the inside. Saw it in a big way. Larson and his teammate Bowman on the outside. See how it pulls that one car back to the 24? Then that big run comes back up, gets him right back up to him again. Big pushes out of Chastain. Got to make sure those bumpers are aligned. Don't be too much on the left rear getting into the corners. This is where business really picks up. Got to be careful with these pushes. Careful with the blocks as well. Still time to be patient here. And make sure the push is square. You want to be going the same direction the car in front of you. Don't want to be moving to the right. Don't want to be moving to the left. And you don't want to be tugging on that steering wheel while you're pushing. That's a great point. But it, the, also the flip side of that is if that car is dancing around in front of you, you can't help it. Right. And exactly. sometimes that's overlooked and, and not uh, you know talked about. Man, I, I was in the center of it when it started, but that thing got loose as I started pushing him. And next thing you know, now I'm on the, on the right, I'm on the left, and I've got him turned around. Right center of your screen in the high lane, that light green number 38. Uh, Todd Gilliland not in that car this week. He's in another front row car, the 36. That is Truck Series champ Zane Smith right up there in the top 10 getting some really valuable cup experience at the pointy end of the field here. 
And he's following one of the best in the business behind Joey Logano. He can learn a lot being behind him right now. If he if he really thinks about what's going on, and Zane's a smart race car driver. I think he's one that's going to take a lot of lessons from Joey and really follow his lead right now. It's unbelievable how much difference, you know, an untimely caution shakes this race up. I mean, you're here talking about, you know, the Gibbs guys and the, and the Toyotas were up front. Um, Tony Chase Briscoe and the Stuart Haas guys were up front. All of a sudden, that caution comes out. Advantage goes to the, uh, see some, sm it's got some sort of debris coming off of there. I think that's actually the film uh, of the in-car camera. Yes, the protective but, film there. How, how about the, the air pressure there though, the negative air pressure that's making that pull off of the camera, that shows you that. But going back to this, the opportunity with the Hendrick cars, it's back in Chase Elliott's lap. We talked about him on the radio. He didn't really have the strategy thinking stage points. Boom, here he is. We're going for him now. Nine laps to go in stage one at Talladega. So you don't miss any of the action. We're going to take you Fox side by side. Fifty five laps complete. Stage one ends five laps from now. Chase Elliott on the inside. Alex Bowman on the outside Two Hendrick Camaros leading the field here with five to go in the stage. Now with his success last year at Talladega. Well Chase Elliott is today's guaranteed fit sponsored by eBay Motors. Yeah Mike Chase Elliott in Talladega he has two wins in the Cup Series here. In fact his last eight starts at Talladega 
two wins in five top tens. He has 11 super speedway top tens and seven top tens in his last 11 super speedway races. He has led a total of 340 laps between Daytona and Talladega. And again, his last trip to victory lane was right here in the fall. This for sure could be an eBay's motor guaranteed fit for Chase to get his third Talladega win. And guess what? Punch his ticket to the playoff after missing six races this year. Oh, that's right, Larry. Thanks. He is playoff eligible, but likely won't have enough points to make it. He's going to have to win his way in, Jamie. That's right. And Chase Elliott qualified 29th yesterday, and his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, told me he was a little disappointed in that. He said, but we have no doubt we will race well. And his driver, Chase, said that his car handled really well mid-pack in that dirty air. They actually haven't even taken tires yet today, stopped twice, fuel only. But now he's getting a feel for what his car is like in clean air. A little bit more of a handful up there, Mike. Things are busy on point. Now, Brad Keselowski is dropping to the back again, uh, pulled out a line. In fact, he might have even been below the double yellow line uh, to back up and back out of what's going on up there. I, I truly believe that's by design here. We got three laps to go in the stage. If he didn't feel like he was in a position where he was going to get stage points, why be in the middle of the hornet's nest? Just take care of it. In the next three laps, you could lose the draft and not go a lap down, no penalty. Josh? Yeah, and you saw Brad back out of the pack right there coming over the radio just a few minutes ago talking about just how frustrated he is with the way that the Fords are drafting compared to the Chevys right now. So not a happy Brad Keselowski. Now he is one of about 16 cars that will have to pit uh, at the caution flag at the end of this stage two and a half laps from now. It's interesting to hear him say that comment and I'm seeing it. Usually when you come here thinking back at Daytona all these super speedways the Fords are the ones that can push the best Brad has been one of the most aggressive with doing that today the Chevrolets have figured that game out and it's actually better than them at it. That's all part of the package. A lot of things that go into that. The way that the air you pick up the air obviously the drafting the drag in your race car you see look at those on the outside Suarez and the Larson into Bowman. Big time accordion. And on the inside, Chastain into Elliott. The nine and the one are the drivers who won the two cup races here last year. I think Bowman's going to have a decision to make. He's riding with his partner, staying right there with Larson. When push comes to shove off of four on this next lap, if it st stays this way, he's probably going to have to move down and guard that nine. Six Chevys leading three Fords. The only Toyota in the top 25 is Denny Hamlin uh, on a little different strategy than the rest of those cars which are 28th on back. Denny's out smart move bail out of this thing not going to lose any positions here. They wreck I'm not going to be a part of it. Final lap stage one. Who gets the 10 points. Watch the back of these cars moving around. That's from contact from the car behind, given that push. And both lanes pretty much tandemed. I like this. Chastain's car is super strong in that push. See Larson doing the same thing. Here they come. Into the trioval and then another thousand feet to the line. Elliott leads here. Thank you, Ross Chastain. You have pushed me, shown me everything I need. And Chase Elliott. Gets his third stage win at Talladega and his first stage win of this season. Good After help. missing uh, six races for a snowboarding accident, Chase Elliott is back and he captures the green and white checkered flag for stage one.
All right, let's have a look at today's Credit One Ones to Watch. Clint, who you got your eye on? I'm taking the whole Chevy camp. I'm sold. I like what I saw right there. I saw that Chastain pushing. I think if they can figure that tandem thing out, that might be the winning combination in there this close. I'll be honest, I'm going to stick with the guy that I feel like is one of the two best researcher plate drivers in the field. I'm going with that Ford Mustang, that 22 of Joey Logano. I'm taking all the 30 to 1 and over shots. <laughs> Todd Gilliland, Ty Dillon has led this race. Noah Gregson, J.J. Yaley has been up in the top dozen. Ryan Priest, Riley Herbst. Any one of those. I mean, they're, they're all going to get to the front. Can they stay up front? That'll be the question. Larry Mack. Larry, I agree with you 100%, whatever it was you said. <laughs> did, did you hear? Not a I thing. I didn't either, but whatever he said, I'm buying it. <laughs> Sorry about that uh, audio issue. Going back to that tandem, Tony, that was that's about as close as that I've ever seen for as long as I've ever seen. I think that's important. If, if you can figure that out just a little bit more, maybe a dragging the brake for that lead car just a little bit more, you might see two of them things take off and, and well, what I saw behind Chase Elliott there with Ross Chastain, Ross was able to, he was so smooth while he was pushing those last two laps. That's the kind of guy you want at the end of the day, somebody that can hold the wheel nice and smooth, their car's stable, that will give you confidence being that lead car. And that car in front of him, you know, Chase Elliott, that car did not dance around, didn't move around. Pit road is open, let's begin with Regan. Mike, the 22 of Joey Logano started off just a little bit free when getting pushed from behind by other cars. Right now, he's free all the way through the corner, just needs a small adjustment for that. Josh? Well, the one of Ross Chastain, tight when in tandem on corner exit, but he said it's not too bad. Four tires and fuel for them. As far as the 48 of Alex Bowman, he said that car just wants to wander out a little bit to the left on him. Jamie? Nice stage win for the nine of Chase Elliott. He hasn't said anything about the handling of his car since he was running up front. A four tire stop for the first time today for the nine. Boy, a disastrous stop for J.J. Yaley. Uh, had to back up to get into his pit, and Noah Gregson had trouble getting out of his pit. Here's your race off pit road, sponsored by Ram. Denny Hamblin, Kevin Harvick. And Justin Haley, the big winner, is there. Larson, definitely not a big winner. How about we talk to our uh, stage one winner? Let's get him on there. How about you there, stage one winner? Not too bad. Yeah, it worked out all right, didn't it? Heck yeah. Landed, took advantage of the pit cycle, and uh, man, car looked good, felt good, huh? Yeah, I felt it like you know, it was all right. Uh, we did a good job controlling the lane there at the end. Obviously, long ways to go, so track position looks like it's going to be a, a really big deal. I didn't see that third lane. It made a little progress, but not as much as it probably needs to. So, we'll, uh, yeah, keep trying to play our cards right. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have fun. Chase Elliott, stage one winner. I first got to know Lloyd Royce when he was chief engineer and then general manager at Buick, and he brought them to success in NASCAR, in IMSA, and to the Indy 500, and at his career as president of General Motors, a position his son Mark holds today. Lloyd Royce passed away this week at the age of 86.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by GEICO. See how easy it is to bundle all your insurance needs. Little action on the boulevard. Quiet place now. Everybody's either up in their seats or up on the roof watching the race. 65 complete, stage one in the books, won by Chase Elliott. Penalties on pit stops. Chris Busher's team ran over equipment. Uh, J.J. Yaley pitting out of the, uh, rather, right. interference on J.J. Yaley, while Riley Herbst pitting out of the box, and Todd Gilden's team over the wall too soon. So those four will go to the back. It's a lot of penalties, bud. It is for one stop, yes. So Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick will be up on point for the restart. There's a look at your top 20. That baby right there put on one hell of a party. Here's the boulevard here, guys. Everybody that maybe never been here before, have a parade that started Friday. Awesome experience in the infield. Just nothing like it. There really isn't, Tony. And what people don't realize, the boulevard there, those two long strips, those used to be runways here. Yes. Back in the day. This was uh, built as a World War II pilot training base. And when Bill France wanted to build his second super speedway, he went to the state of Alabama, and they said, we will provide the land. We're building a new interstate, I-20, between Atlanta and Birmingham. We'll build an exit at each end of the property and give you a, an eight-lane boulevard out front to run traffic in and out. I think the big traffic jam is going to be next door at Talladega Airport. You can well, all of you well-heeled jet setters trying to leave here after the race. <laughs> and there was the runways. You could definitely see the makeout of the way it was. Cool that it's an airport right here next to the racetrack. Well, and you rode Harley Davidson's here, and Harley used to use this as a test facility. Yep. They used a lot of stuff in the infield. So the back of the field comes in to top off, as is traditional here. Well, Fox Saturday baseball is heating up with an NL East rivalry. Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves will take on Pete Alonso and the Mets, or you will see the Cubs take on the Marlins. Saturday at 4 Eastern on Fox. Joey Logano, seventh in line as they came to the choose. He's going to restart on the outside. What's their strategy? Jerry was still on all the fours to fit together. After the last fiasco, fix the plan. Working on it. Okay. <laughs> you think all the fours will fit together like the last fiasco? <laughs> Stick to the plan, he asked Paul Wolf. I think they will. I, you know, Ford, I feel like, was the first OEM to really start the strategy at the restrictor plate tracks of working together as a group. They would have pre-race meetings talking about how can they help each other, and then at the end, you race each other. But get yourselves to the front first, work with each other in your group. How about Kevin Harvick? We're going to listen to his spotter, Tim Fidoa on this restart. You're right, Tony. I mean, it definitely started with a Ford camp. We lived it. Um, was in a lot of those meetings, and quite frankly, we had them. We got them good with our strategy, and uh, everybody quickly followed suit. But that's where the name of the game is. You have to, the strengths and numbers, you saw it with the Toyotas. They were going to be in big trouble at that caution not came out. They not only didn't, uh, when, those, when Reddick spun, it jumbled the group up, so not only do they not have the strength in numbers, when they come off a of pit road, they weren't together. Here they come to the Geico restart zone for stage two, Denny Hamlin to lead them across. Ready, ready, ready. Green, green, green. 19. by Kevin Harvick on the outside. There's that Chastain. Massive monster push again. Tighter. Tight. I like what that one car is able to do. I feel like he's able to connect to them bumpers, be way more aggressive with his pushes than most everybody out there. 
And that's something those Camaros could not do here last year. Uh, this year, each of the OEMs, Ford, Chevy, and Toyota, has a new nose piece. And one of the redesigned goals was so that they would not go flush to the rear bumper of the car they were behind. So you wouldn't have those offset pushes that caused us a lot of problems last year. Yeah, I mean, the simple facts are the Fords have more of a flatter nose. It helps them, um, you know, push and draft like you see Chastain. Look at that run. Back in here, rolling. Gets to the corner and they start to break up. You see that again, pushed out, all right. Now, if you're Justin Haley, drag a little bit of brake, lift a little bit, just easy. Do not get too far out there. That was almost to the point where you're almost too far out and you just got to leg it out because you know they're going to come back to you. But and you get out too far and then you drag the brake, then you create a big problem in the log jam. Not necessarily the first car behind you, but the second, third on back. But the goal, you're exactly spot on. The goal is to not get out too far there. The closer you can stay to that car, the more it keeps that energy going. Getting out too far in front, which was caused at least one of the two big ones in yesterday's race. Now those Xfinity Series drivers, most of them have less experience, and they only get to race here once a year. Well, exactly, because now you're dead in the water. Eventually you run out of that steam. They are still connected behind you and run you down in such a big rush. Now you're forced for one of those massive blocks, and it's just too late. You get wrecked. Hi, come here. Speaking of yesterday, the uh, driver that had the big rollover, Blaine Perkins, uh, was taken for observation to a local hospital. We have an update today. He is doing very well. Uh, nothing broken. They're going to keep him the rest of the day and maybe into tomorrow just for further observation as a precaution. So uh, good to hear that he is on the mend. Very good to hear that. Scary wreck. Big, big wreck. Martin Truex trying to get up to Denny Hamlin. Uh, those two Toyotas are a car length and a lane apart here in a sea of Fords and Chevrolets. I heard Chase talk about that third lane. That third lane, I, I'm watching this. I'm like, man, where's the third lane at? Well, how come nobody's coming? They tried it. Stenhouse have been watching a couple of those guys tried it coming to that stage in and it just did not work. Cannot keep the momentum on that high line on the outside. It's going to take either more cars, Tony, or that just might not be in the cards today. And I agree. It's really too early to tell. But I think the scenario we did see, the cars that were in that second lane saw that outside line building and developing and, and gaining momentum. And they kept peeling up there. Well, every time they did that, it took a second to get that lead car back up to speed. Then they'd catch somebody else. So it just never really had enough time to develop and get momentum. So here's one of the questions in Clint's Super 6 contest for 25 grand. Which of these two drivers will have the better finish at the end of the race? And how many positions will they be separated by? Right now, that advantage obviously is going to that one ball, Ross Chastain. A lot of racing left in this stage. Interesting. I don't know if strategy or happenstance, but Brad Keselowski and his teammate Chris Buescher, who was under penalty at the end of stage one, they have gotten together. They're drafting alone a little bit by themselves, right at the back of the pack, trying to stay completely out of trouble. I remember one time here when Tony Stewart and Bobby Labonte were teammates and did just that. One was at the back, one was at the front and ended up right on top of each other in one big crash. <laughs> Kevin Harvick leading Talladega.
Kevin Harvick leading, but a lot of the action has been on the boulevard. Yes, there is a parade. Yes, they throw beads. Yes, alcohol is involved, <laughs> but fans of all ages have a great time on the boulevard in the infield of Talladega. Now, boy, we have had big ones. Blaine Perkins with a nasty sidewinder rollover crash that sent him to the hospital for observation. Uh, Ryan Sieg around after Daniel Hemrick made too late of a block. And those were the two big ones in yesterday's Xfinity Series race in which, as Tony pointed out, only seven cars emerged unscathed from all the carnage here yesterday. Oh, I did say in a YouTube clip after a race, they should see it a lot where I said they shouldn't stop till they all get wrecked. So. <laughs> Ran out of laps. Yeah. Well, Martin Truex found his way to the bottom of the racetrack up front. Then he latched on to uh, Denny Hamlin, and now Joey Logano is trying to spoil the fun. That was a heads up move. Denny made that, that uh, move to the outside. Teammate Truex gave him some room to be able to do it. Both of those guys capitalize on it right back to the top. Now Bubba Wallace is in that mix trying to get to his Toyota stable mates. He was 10th about three laps ago and now uh, he moved up to 7th back to 9th but still uh, trying to gain ground and get up there with Truex and Hamlin. Two Toyotas two Fords. Haley's Chevy along with Larson and Chastain three Chevys in the top 10 riding with Noah Gregson we can always bet on high speed action here at Talladega and the fans here can bet on Wendy's to deliver all the fun out on the boulevard so let's take a look this is bet on Biggie sponsored by Wendy's. I'd heard there was a Bob Pockra sighting, but I didn't quite believe it. However, I, there is video. I would, would not have right it. Now, I would not have believed it myself if I didn't just see that too. You He's know, got I wanna, some moves. I'm going to give them props. They did a fantastic job with that activation out there. That was the spot to be all weekend long. Very cool to see that. Give it back to our fans too. I mean, they were literally had the that uh, delivery window, pickup window, takeout window, I guess you would call it. It thing was open for three days, even late into the night. I did, cool. I did hear Michael ask, Bob, what are you doing? And Bob said, uh, dancing, I think. <laughs> Braver than I am. <laughs> you know, I, I heard agree. you say, you know, two Toyotas, three Fords right there, Chevrolets, kind of jumbled up. Um, saw at the end of that first stage, you saw the Hendrick cars all together, and I, they stayed together. You know, that's the only package pair you see is Denny Hamlin and his teammate Truex right there. These guys are going to have to find each other and, and do what the, the, you know, the Hendrick camp accomplished there at the end if they're going to have success, I believe. Well, they've got 20 laps to do it. To the and Larry, if I'm concerned, it's for the Toyotas because they are spread out through this entire pack. If they have to pit under green, it's not going to be possible for them to pit together, is it? It's going to be hard, Mike, but what we saw in that first set of green flag pit stops, I felt like that caution uh, with Briscoe spinning out on pit road kind of saved them because they, they were really going to be the real loser just because they got so separated when Tyler Reddick spun and had to do four tires. So everyone is on the lead lap now except Chase Briscoe, as Larry pointed out, and Michael McDowell, who brought out the first caution. They are each one lap down. See them cow flaps, the hood flaps coming up that pressure going over that car coming off the spoiler in front of them negative pressure pulls those up kind of in your view a little bit doesn't seem to bother them I've asked a couple of those drivers Kevin Harvick I, in particular I was like man can you does that bother you he goes now nah, you get used to it no big deal well it's a tell just like a poker hand when you're when you're watching for somebody when they see that flap they know where they're at they know what that pressure change is 
they know they're in a good spot. It certainly shows. It's a tell-all sign. Yeah. You know exactly. You know, you can look up and see them on the back straightaway, and when them flaps pull up, you know they're right on their bumper. Now, we mentioned uh, Brad Kozlowski went to the back to pick up his teammate, Chris Busher, who restarted uh, after serving a penalty. Here's Brad's radio. We just nobody moves. They just run side by side. You can't do anything. So, but we get the track position, we're going to fight for a 20 spin. So, trying to take care of the fuel and put you in the spot, Matt, where you can be aggressive with a big call. So give me that. He's right. And we all see that. But where do you, all right, so where do you get the track position? That's going to come on pit road. When things jumble up, you have to be able to methodically make the right decisions. Larry needs to help me. I'm going to need some track position with your strategy. Back up near the front, Denny Hamlin, right on the bumper of his teammate Martin Truex. Jamie. And I talked to Denny's crew chief, Chris Gabehart, this morning about their performance. And he said, with this next-gen car, we've just been okay at the super speedways. We've had to evolve our thinking. So we came with something new. We have not stopped. We have tried everything we can. And we really feel like we're bringing something today that you will see a bump in performance starting here and in the coming weeks. And we certainly have seen that so far today. Denny Hamlin happy with the car. And I'm listening to Denny, and he's calling the shots on the radio to his spotter, telling him what he wants. Martin Shurex Jr. to do so they don't lose the pack and they can work together as the only two Toyotas up there. That's pretty interesting. So with Truex and Logano leading the two lanes around Talladega, we'll take a break with 24 to go in stage two. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Bush Light, who reminds you to drink responsibly. 
87 laps complete at Talladega. All 38 cars in the lead draft. First to 36th, just over two seconds. That's how close they run here. Now let's take a look at today's right combination, sponsored by Subway. Yeah, Mike, let's take a look at Joey Logano and his crew chief, Paul Wolf. This is their fourth season together. They've been to victory lane nine times and, of course, won the 2022 Cup Series championship. They've made the championship for two out of the last three years. Pretty solid so far. Second in the Daytona 500, second last week at Martinsville, and, of course, won that Atlanta race a few weeks ago. All of this could be the subway right combination for Joey and Paul to get their second win of the year, which would be Joey's fourth Talladega win. Well, he just got pushed to the lead by Justin Haley as they come through the tri-oval. I can get around that. I think that's a good pick, Larry. Best in the business, in my opinion. Tony, you said it in the pre-race. When it comes to these super speedways, that boy's good. He Thanks. just has a confidence about him that it's just hard to deny. When you see him get to the lead, he's very, very comfortable if he has to single-handedly control multiple lanes at a time. You know, something that I, I've heard a little bit of frustration in his voice in the radio, you know, I heard him talk about Busher pushing me too. You know, he's kind of kind of grouchy in that car today. I don't know, know where that comes from, but uh, it, uh, it might be something to watch here at the end of this race and how he's driving. So we're 30 laps in to stage two, half of the 60 laps of the stage. Sounds to me like a good time for a Sunday NASCAR on Fox. Crank it up. Martin Truex leads them off turn number two with Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Priest, and Joey Logano. We're going to take you Fox side by side.
Martin Truex out front. He'd only let 76 laps here entering today in 36 starts, but Truex has been out front for 16 circuits today. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Hey, hey, hey. How about this outside line, Tony? Business is picking up. Look at the momentum. It started with those first four cars, and they really didn't get going. The last two that have piled in there, it looks like Riley Herbst. They, they, they've started generating that energy. And as we heard earlier, you're, you're hearing these guys mid-pack, second, third row on back, having to lift down the throttle. That outside line, I guarantee they're staying in the gas. They've been able to build up momentum up to start to make a charge. Yes, they are. Big push out Eric Jones on the bumper. Bubba Wallace, oh, got him sideways. All right, boy, you're going to pull up in front of me. You better be holding on. You're going for a ride. Looking back from Wallace's Toyota cam. I think this is very important. We, we needed to figure this out. I'm glad that Eric Jones jumped up there, tried this outside line, got some help, got some cars established behind him. And here we are. Third row going to the front. And you talked about how are these Toyotas going to get back together. Right now, you got three of them right together. Now it's going to be very interesting. Will Bubba now decide to stay and ride? Obvious. The obvious is he's going to try to block, right? Slow both of them down. But eventually, I believe that he's going to have to make a choice. Oh, my man likes that. <laughs> awesome. Well, when it comes time to pit, having three lanes wide of cars is going to make it very difficult for some drivers to find their friends and get to pit road. You'll definitely be jockeying around getting Get to those positions and it's coming quick. That's going to be the tell. When we see that lane start dissipating and breaking apart and guys getting down into that second lane, that's going to be the tell that the cycle's going to start in two or three laps. So watch for that to happen, what, three to four laps from now? I think so. Picking up McDowell, going another lap down. Very unfortunate problem with his right rear. It just never have seemed to get that fixed. Tire went down was our first caution. What you see there is something that we don't see at Daytona. Talladega is so much wider. McDowell being on the bottom, where the, the last time that pack caught him, he went all the way to the top, gave those guys room. He didn't have that option. With that outside line developed, he had to stay on the bottom. But you can see all three of those lines were able to get around no problem. One of the biggest reasons that third lane started working, though, is the middle and even the bottom was really accordion. You see Austin Dillon. Now here comes LaJoy. Here comes Almarilla. That middle lane really was kind of accordion. They had to check up, and that momentum swing advantage went to that outside line. There's Truex moving down. I think you're starting to see getting to Whoa, man, Bubba's car is a handful. Be careful, Denny. But you're seeing them moving down, uh, finding one another for this pit cycle. So here we are, a few laps past halfway, and there's only, oh, 36 cars that could win it. <laughs> it's exactly right. Let's have a look at today's lap leaders, sponsored by Novartis. Bubba Wallace, 25 circuits out in front. Martin Truex having his best day ever at Talladega. Chase Elliott back on midseason form. Bowman, Hamlin, and Harvick. Something I think is interesting we haven't really talked about. Come the Fords is down. right here with Tyler Reddick. If you remember, hit the wall on pit entry. No caution and he's still up in the top 20 right now. So shows how durable these cars are. The only thing that's the Achilles heel are tow links, and by all means, do not get a flat tire if you want to go anywhere. Right, Reddick was a lap down. He got it back getting the free pass when uh, Chase Briscoe brought out the race's second caution of the day, and here he is back in the top 15. Blows my mind. Outside line, completely gone again. They literally drove all the way to the front and put, well, it put Bubba Wallace in the lead. Now all of a sudden it's gone, completely deteriorated and, and out of here. All right, Larry, uh, how many laps have you got to find your friends? Yeah, I would say in the next four to six laps. But Clint, here's how I'm going to help you on pit road. I'm out of the four tire stop business. We have to spend as little bit of time as we can on pit road fuel and two tires. But help me help you. You can't be sliding the tires. You can't be spinning out if we're just going to do two tires per stop from here on out. Yeah, that's a great point. 
and something that obviously everybody's learned. It kind of surprised me when Briscoe did that. You know, that's a communication error in my opinion. Somebody should have been telling all those guys, and I promise you, you probably heard it in other cars. Hey, Reddick had trouble, spun out on pit road. I'm a reminder, just be careful, be patient, feel this thing out the first time. Look at the Dillon brothers up front in the outside lane. Ty then Austin. And look at Kevin Harvick's day. We see on the graph here where around lap 40, Harvick bailed out, didn't like what he was seeing, went to the back, and he's slowly but surely worked his way back up to the front. Another thing with a wingman. Ryan Priest has been with him the whole way. Absolutely. Yes. Another thing that you can do coming on the pit road, Tony, probably dial some brake. If you have some rear, too much rear brake in this thing, after I saw Reddick, here they come, saw Reddick and uh, Briscoe spin out. Man, Chastain was all over the place. Well, this is why the Hendrick cars all drifted to the back, so they would have an Im unimpeded entrance to pit road. Josh. Yeah, let's start with the one of Ross Chastain. He's been happy with his car. The only concern is how that car is going in the draft, needing the car behind him to suck up a little bit more. Kyle Busch in in the eight as well. They've worked a little bit on that car. He was really happy with the balance of it early on. A lot of takers here. You see Alex Bowman on pit road and Kyle Busch. Quick stop for him as Chase Elliott makes his way down as well. Well, they all come off in a pretty tight group. Uh, that will be to their advantage getting back up to speed. Let's see who, who peels off this time with 16 to go in the stage. Looks like the Toyotas this time. A mixed bag, Toyotas and Chevys, Regan. Mike, the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. has been good all day long. They got the pit stall they wanted, which is the first win, and has not complained about the race car. And Bubba Wallace in the 23 getting back to the front. Everything was all good as soon as he got front. That's his only comment. Jamie? Danny Hamlin, another Toyota, making his way down to the number one pit box. Remember, no tires last stop there. Pretty happy with it. Got a little overheated, had to back it down on that last stop. Just fuel only here for Denny Hamlin. Truex, Austin Dillon, and Wallace lead that group off pit road. One group left. I bet they come this time. But the Fords should be coming. Uh, it's all the Fords and Ty Dillon. <laughs> Dylan was uh, they are. on the outside in that group and uh, could not get down to pit with the rest of the Chevys, so he has a bunch of new friends. Regan. Like the 41, Ryan Priest having a great day. His only complaint is he can't get his car to suck up to the car in front of him unless he's got somebody right behind him. And the four, Kevin Harvick, too squirrely when he's getting pushed right now. Josh? Well, 10 F. Eric Amaral led six laps so far today. He's been happy with that car. They come down, get a tear up, and just fuel. That's the story for most of the Fords, fuel only on this stop, and it looks like the first seven of them are going to leave, leave together, followed by a group of five. Keep an eye on that tracker. So the four cars at the top of the board have not pitted. Remember, I'm going to hang out and back Brad. Well, that's Keselowski in the lead with Busher, Yaley, and Herbst. Oh, Joey Logano, too fast exiting. That's going to hurt. Josh. A second in the six of Brad Keselowski. We heard before he's been content to just ride in the back, not happy with the way that the Fords have been drafting. Led a couple laps, and now he's coming in to pit right now. The RFK cars in and out. All of these are fuel only stops, including Riley Herbst. Those four Fords lead together. And that will pretty much complete this run of green flag stops. You got the Chevrolets on the outside kind of hung out. Obviously, the Toyota guys did a good job finding that track position, managing their pit stop. But I think the Ford guys definitely did a great job and gained, gained a lot of track position with that stop. Pretty cool to have all three of those conversations going on there. A lot of things have to go right. So Martin Truex back to the lead as things, well, I say cycle out. There's still three wide all the way through this pack as everybody fights for position with 82 laps to go.
get that. All up and down the boulevard and on top of these campers. <laughs> they are enjoying the race, the cuisine, the games, and the new leader, Chase Elliott. He's up there battling with Bubba Wallace, Eric Almirola, Martin Truex, and Kevin Harvick. As things sort out after green flag pit stops, we had about four straight laps of four wide racing. And now it's settled down, if you will, to just three abreast. I am super impressed with Chase Elliott. Allen on that box. Man, out of strategy, they keep putting that car in the front when it matters. The end of these stages, pretty impressive. Chase Elliott, biggest mover on that cycle. Today is Allen Gustafson, 650th NASCAR Cup race atop the pit box. Also impressive. That's a lot of meetings. That's what that is. A lot of competition meetings all week long. Wait for that big day on Sunday. When we had those competition meetings, we had to make you speak last at them because you'd get you'd find an excuse to get up and you'd never come back. If you went first. <laughs> See that the hood actually the force the air it actually pulls the hood apart from the flaps and even. So wow, the here. third lane just completely dissipated. It had dropped back toward the second half of this group, and now it's gone. Well, somebody's trying it. Yeah, lone soldier out there was Kyle, Kyle Busch. Bush. And hey, how about Brad Keselowski? Right behind him. Remember, Bubba Wallace, that car was extremely loose with people pushing him. It's going to get tight here at the end. He's going to have his hands full. Whoever pushes him has to be careful with that. That's McDowell going a lap down on the outside. Four of the top ten right now uh, are in that outlier group of long shots. Harrison Burton, Corey LaJoy, Justin Haley, Ryan Priest, all right up there in the mix. Look how much more smooth Chase Elliott's car is with the push from Al Maroli. When Truex gets to Bubba's uh, bumper, that thing is dancing all over the place. Very smooth right here with the nine, Tony. I think something that we are seeing, though, is you saw the entry to turn three. They were locked up. As soon as they get to the corner, then you see that separation. That's the second car that's lifting to get away from it a little bit and keep that car stable in front. Here's Jamie on the leader. Well, you mentioned it, Alan Gustafson, the crew chief for Chase Elliott, making his 650th start as a crew chief. This man has accomplished a lot. And I talked to him about that this morning and said, what are some of the highlights of your career? He started back as a full-time crew chief in 2005 with a young Kyle Busch. He said getting that first win for Kyle Busch was definitely a highlight. Of course, he went on to win the Brickyard 400 with Jeff Gordon and won the championship in 2020 with Chase Elliott. It's been a long and very successful career. Career and he's still got it. Obviously, with the strategy already, he's looking to win his second stage today. Absolutely. Now, Joey Logano has served his penalty, and Logano's in turn one now as the start and finish line uh, is where the pack is. With six laps to go, Larry thinks they will overtake him and put him a lap down, which would get unwound with the free pass at the end of the stage. And I agree. I mean, the, the, the amount of speed, I mean, time difference here. Well, he's 178. 10 to 12 miles per hour difference. Yep. Mike, yeah. Tony, 10 to 12 miles per hour. You you can't you can't stay anywhere Whoa. near that lead pack at that 10 mile, 10 12 mile an hour difference like that. Hang on to it, Bubba. I'm telling you, that thing is a handful. Now, what Joey can't do is let the whole pack go by because in the middle of that pack is Chase Briscoe, and he would be the free pass car if Logano tacks on at the tail end of the line. There's Briscoe. And the old goat cam, the uh, Mahindra tractor cam, honoring, if you want to call it that, Tony Stewart. <laughs> wow. That tells the story of Joey Logano's fret right now when he looks in that rearview mirror. But he's got to get in line. Once he gets a bit of this draft, oh, oh they're going to go either side of him. He's going to be the hot dog in the bun here. He was that hoping was... that they would stay with him, but they had way too big of a run ah. to sit there and try to stop and catch him. The two car, Austin Sendrick will pick him up, and now he can battle with the 14 for the free pass position. That was a pretty uh, risky maneuver right there. Yeah. Well, but the, the thing that he didn't do is when they got there, he didn't make a move. 
he 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 held his line in that center lane and he made them make a decision whether they were going to slow down to pick him up or make that big move to the outside. Well I saw him move up from the bottom and I thought he was just going to give him the bottom the whole thing like McDowell's been doing and all of a sudden he stayed right in the middle. Well, I think everybody else thought the same thing. And isn't that what you'd ask of a car that's about to be lapped hold your line. Yeah but normally you would want them to be all the way down or all the way up. Joey wasn't trying to mess anybody up. He's just trying to do exactly what he's got to do and trying to hold that position. You he doesn't it. want to be in the middle line. You said it. He's not normal. <laughs> That's true. But he's smart. I mean, he understands yeah. the scenario. He knows he's racing that 14 car now. It was a great move. Absolutely. I mean, he he didn't do anything that put anybody in jeopardy. He just made those guys and Bubba in particular being the leader of that, that line make the decision. And what worked out for him was Austin Sendrick pulled right to his bumper and stayed there. And that's why at the moment Logano's in the free pass position and Briscoe is on the inside three or four cars further back. In bottom in front. On you, split off on the 11 by one. Now one off of you, one off of you. Three to go, stage two. I think Truex is being very patient with his pushes of Bubba, but I don't. I just don't think he. I think he's capable of pushing harder. I think he's afraid to turn him around, which is very valid. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he's. Well, the back end of Bubba's car has got his dancing <laughs> shoes on. That <laughs> he's been left, right, all kinds of every which way but loose, or every which loose but and, you know. And it really doesn't matter who's behind him. You know, you can't just pinpoint that on the Toyotas. And the one thing I do like about the Toyotas, there's three in a row. Now we've got Denny Hamlin hooked up with, here comes another tandem scenario. That boy in that 10 car is good at this. Well, Chase Elliott is trying to do what it surprises me to learn no one has ever done here. Nobody has ever swept the first two stages of a race at Talladega in the Cup Series. He's got a great pusher, great help behind him. Big Boss looks a little bit more nervous than we saw him earlier. Now Logano's in the pack and he is right at race leader speed. Still fighting for the free pass position. He and Chase Briscoe and B.J. McLeod all one lap down. Tell the fans, if you really want to understand what drafting is like, when you're on the interstate sometime and you don't have a lot of traffic around, you roll your window down. Take your hand, make it flat, sit it right behind the mirror, and it'll suck your hand to the glass of the mirror. You stick it above that in the clean air, and it tries to pull your arm back. And that will show you why that 10, 12 mile hour difference was so incredible when he was by himself. Here it comes. Here comes a move by Almirola. Might be perfect time. Awesome. How about that? Eric Almirola trying to spoil stage two uh, for Chase Elliott. He did, and Bubba Wallace, and does. Perfect time, textbook. Stage win for Eric Almirola, Stuart Haas, and Ford. It's his first stage win since 2020.
Back here in the race day studios, Eric Amarola with that incredible move at the last second to win stage two. Take it away from Chase Elliott, who won stage one. As we get you set to start the third and final stage, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the race so far. Jamie, what we got? Yeah, early on you see lap two, Michael McDowell has a tire go down. He ended up having some suspension issues as well. Really lucky in this direction, Shannon, that nobody else was involved in a single car wreck right there. Yeah, we saw some issues getting on pit road very early in this race. Oh, yeah, and you know, this is the, some of the first pit stops we saw. You see Tyler Reddick right there. Crazy. Pretty big damage on that inside wall. And then just a couple of laps later, Chase Briscoe has the same thing. He actually gets stuck on pit road, blows a right front tire out, and is not able to get going. But didn't slow Chase Elliott down. He went on to win stage one. He did. Tony Stewart on the side of that car went for a little ride on pit road. In, in a row. Yeah, in a row. <laughs> yeah, and then Joey Logano right here has been fast on the track, but also speeding on the exit of pit road. We saw him make that really aggressive move to stay on the lead lap at the end of stage two. Yeah, he did. And Eric Amarola, as I mentioned, with this move right here to win stage two. And Mike, we know this is when business starts to pick up. So we'll see how it goes out there in Talladega. Take it away. Absolutely. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah, uh, Joey's move to be in the free pass position was going to be our pod's big move of the race. And then on the last lap of the stage, everything changed. There's Joey. So uh, he gets the free pass. He is back on the lead lap, one of 35 lead lap cars when we restart. And here's what it looked like from Joey's point of view, getting swarmed on both sides. Yeah, and it's not a good look, but at the same time, he's just trying to find a way to get in line as quick as he can to try to stay ahead of that 14 car. Knows the stage is going to end once that free pass. So the pits are open at the end of stage two. Scheduled stops here. Let's join Regan Smith. Mike, we saw Bubba Wallace dancing around there off the front bumper of the 19 car, but not a comment about that from the driver. All he told the team was, let's just keep it up front as best we can. And Kevin Harvick in the four car. That car was squirrely earlier when he was getting a push. It was not this run. He was better this run. Very complimentary of the move his teammate made to win that stage. Josh? Eric Almirola in the 10 car show. He's got a very strong car. A crew member going over the wall and just fell down, but they're getting four tires and a lot of fuel there, Jamie. Chase Elliott said he saw Eric Almirola's move coming, but it wasn't worth it to wreck in order to block him. A four-tire stop for him had a small vibration there as well. First off pit road will be Almirola just ahead of Denny Hamlin. How about we dial up our uh, stage two winner? He's your driver, buddy. Have at it. Eric, it's your boss up in the booth. You got us, bud? Yes, sir. I got you. Hey, man, great move to win stage two there. What do you think you got for the rest of the day here? Uh, we have a really fast Smithfield Ford Mustang. It's just about positioning yourself. you got to be so smart. The race now is so track position dependent. It's not like the old days where you could kind of lay back and knife your way through the field when you wanted to. If you had a good enough car, you have to maintain your position. You've got to be really smart on how you execute the green flag stops and all that stuff. So got a lot of work to do here in this final stage, but sure helps when uh, Drew and the boys bring us a, a really fast Smithfield Ford Mustang. So we'll see if we can finish it off here, keep our track position, do all the little things right. Well, you're doing them right so far, bud. Proud of you. Stick with it, man. Try to bring this thing home for us today. 10-4, maybe you can come visit us uh, later and get, get your picture taken with us. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, six cars stayed out and did not pit. We'll detail those when we come back.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express card. Finishing up the caution flag at the end of stage number two. Now, uh, drivers that stayed out included three of the Hendrick cars, Byron, Bowman, and Larson, along with Keselowski and Austin Hill in the Beard Motorsports car. They all stayed out. They all just pitted the last time around while uh, pit road was relatively uncluttered. And we'll kind of start out back among the 35 cars that are on the lead lap. Eric Almarola is the race leader and he is going to be our big move sponsored by pods of the day what he did on the last lap to win that stage watch the 10 car gets a nice run push from the four car just pulls up pulls right out textbook and old chase knew it he was a sitting duck knew they were coming didn't want to pull up and make that block you will at the end of the race he will have to make that block I don't know where he where he picked it, but whatever that spot was, put that baby <laughs> in the bank. I, it was exactly how you do it. Yes. Perfect timing. So that's your big move sponsored by Pods. And after the stage ended, here's what Chase had to say. I mean, I knew it was coming, bud, but it ain't worth wrecking right here. Well, he did the right thing. Great job. I still, you got to keep that bottom. Is everything right there? And that's just a veteran move. I mean, that's a smart race car driver, knows risk versus reward. Still got nine points. He, he, the only thing he lost there, one point. That was it. So did the right thing. Uh, I agree. Like Clint said, at the end of the race, then you got to be more aggressive. But right now is not that time. There are the stage points earned today. And how about that red and white Ford right there? Harrison Burton for the Wood Brothers has uh, been up here in the top ten. Quietly. For the latter half of stage number two. And we'll restart fifth. So, again, taking advantage of, of a, you know, untimely pit stop, that nine bunch did a great job. Talking to him in the pre-race, he wasn't really thinking stage points for today. And here he is, nailed two of them spot on. So, actually, Burton will restart third behind Bubba Wallace. On the choose, Eric Almarola will lead them to green. You mentioned Harrison Burton. There he is. Up front, track position, Noah Gregson in tow. Same exact situation with both of those guys. Let's see what they can do. There's a big block by Bubba moving up. How do you manage both lanes at once here? Listen to that spotter. That's right. Together, one off you, 10. Burton to the lead with Noah Gregson. And like Clint mentioned early in the show, you have to have that trust and confidence in your spotter. When he says go, you have to go now, and you and you have to have that confidence that he's making the right decision. And that that takes time to build that relationship and that trust. It doesn't just happen because the first time the guy says, "Hey, get the bottom," you, you don't just do it. You don't trust it right off the bat. It takes a little time to build that rapport. Truex third on the inside. Looking back from Gregson behind him is Blaney. And I think obviously things are going to start ratcheting up. You know, you're not seeing a lot of movement. You're not seeing a lot of aggression by anybody pushing or blocking. All that will pick up. The only thing you have seen a lot of and heard a lot of is these drivers talking about how hard track position is to come by. That being said, the aggression is going to pick up to try to guard it. Well, I think the real race starts right now because they all know how hard it's been and they know they can't wait to the end because how hard it is to pass. You've got to start right now. Let's check with Jamie on the new leader. Harrison Burton leading his first ever laps here at Talladega, making just his 47th career start. And he came on the radio there before that last caution and said he felt pretty good. They put four tires on it and Brian Wilson, his crew chief, said that's the last time we're taking four. We've got a good piece here. Keep it up there. A couple drivers got phone calls today, one from Jim France and one from Mike Helton. They thought they were in big trouble. No, they were being named to NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers list. Another one unveiled this weekend when uh, Harrison Burton announced 
uh, on his on his in-car radio over the pace laps uh, that his dad Jeff has been named one of NASCAR's uh, 75 greatest. The drivers who thought they were in trouble, I think, were Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott. I'll be honest, I would have thought the same thing. <laughs> Normally when I got that call, I was in trouble. That's a pretty cool honor. Jeff Burton, we all we all called him the mayor, and we did for a reason because Jeff was very good at teaching everybody respect and etiquette in this sport. Jeff was a guy that I really enjoyed and respected in this sport. Well, Kyle Larson drove his way to Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane last weekend in Martinsville. Who's going to make it there today in Talladega? We still have 35 drivers on the lead lap. And in the lead draft, separated by just 2.1 seconds from first to 35th. Jamie. Update on Kyle Larson and those three Hendrick cars that decided to pit a lap later than the rest of the field. I talked to Cliff Daniels, the crew chief for Kyle, and said, what was the advantage there? He said, well, we were running 28th. We may as well stay out an extra lap, have an extra lap of fuel for the end. He said, you wouldn't do that if you're running top five, but it's a good move for us. Cliff Daniel. One smart dude. Very calculated with every move. I think a lot of that guy. 58 laps to go, and two of those Penske prepared Fords on point. Ryan Blaney and Harrison Burton. The last six races at Talladega, six different drivers have found their way to victory lane. I think the first 14 Talladega 500s had different winners. Uh, that was, was the fall race here, or July race here, for many, many years. 14 years without a repeat winner. As this track favors dark horses and long shots, you certainly have one right down the inside. Well, Harrison Burton doing a great job leading this field. Logging them laps. Memories, that memory bank that we talked about. 
Going to have to make some of these blocks. Make sure that if you make a mistake, note it. 35 cars on the lead lap, 35 drivers hard at work. A dozen drivers have gotten their first ever cup win here at Talladega. And for more than half of those, it was their only win in the NASCAR Cup Series. Could this be a Burton family weekend? Harrison's cousin Jeb went to victory yesterday in the Xfinity Series race, and that was a wild one. Well, don't forget his car owners too, the Wood Brothers. I mean, such a great history and legacy in this sport. That is, it's not uncommon to see that 21 car up front. That'd be a big win. <laughs> There's mom, Kim Burton. How she's handled all these races over the years. She is one nervous woman. I remember having. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a heart monitor on her. Yeah. <laughs> That's, Jim, I, I guarantee it's higher than the drivers are right now. Having Jeff Burton as my teammate all them years, it was it was almost, but we all <laughs> kind of rubbed on her a little bit. It was it was so fun to uh, to see how nervous she is. And that was with her husband. Now that it's her baby in that car, yeah. it's through the roof. But she's just as passionate about winning races as her husband and her son are about winning races. I mean, she's very competitive. She's big ho in, in horse riding horse shows. I mean, she's a competitive person, too. I wouldn't want her in a race car. She'd be pretty good. Driver's eye camera being worn by Martin Truex uh, this weekend. Thanks to Bass Pro Shops for that. Regan with an update. Well, Mike, the 19 of Martin Truex has been very quiet all day long, but under that last caution, talking to his team, he explained to them the cars that he could work better with. It, it was not his Toyota teammates. It was actually the Fords. He commented on how aggressive he could be with the Fords, how much he could push them. Keep an eye on that as this race plays out. I know you look for teammates when you can, but you also want to look for whoever's the best car you're, you can work with. That is interesting and, and such a valid thing. I was just saying about that memory bank, you know, learn what you can out there because it's going to get, you know, busy at the end of this race and you're going to be pushing who knows who. You talked about audibles in a pre-race. I heard you say that, Tony. You may not get to the end of this thing with the car that you want, but you need to be able to strategize and get with what the next best thing. And who is that going to be? You just heard one of them. Next Sunday, the NASCAR Cup Series continues at Dover where the best drivers in America try to take on the Monster Mile. Pre-race coverage begins at 1 Eastern, then the Worth 400 at 2. Catch it all next Sunday on FS1. Joining us, Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace. How about that? Be cool to get him in the booth and always uh, very entertaining, always very opinionated. I want you know, Standing next to me, I, you know, I'm no, none of those things, not opinionated <laughs> at all. We might finally have somebody in the booth that talks as much or more than you. <laughs> Tony, where are you, you going to be next weekend? I might join you. I'll be at Charlotte at no. the four wide nationals no. in the drag car again. No, no chance of that. I got to go somewhere. They turn left and right. But Love drag racing. We turn left at the end of the, at the shutdown end. area. And not until let's hope. <laughs> and that'll be, that'll be a big event. Pretty neat you was able to accomplish that. Grew up a drag race and, uh, you know, remember them coming to the Heartland Park. And as a fan of that, you've uh, switched gears there, Tony. And for you to get in that thing and win so early, unbelievable. What, what I think you can't is, do behind a wheel. Here's the coolest thing. How many tracks are there at Las Vegas in that whole complex? And how many have you won at? All of them. Right. Four, four of them. It's amazing. Now, it, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I still love what I do in NASCAR. and but to drive this alcohol dragster with the McPhillips family. There's just a different skill set and, and things that you have to think about that you don't think about driving at Talladega here today. And uh, to be able to finish that off and my wife Leah there with the team, just an amazing day for us. And you won by how much, how little? Three ten thousandths of a second. So oh, that's three. .0003 is our margin of victory. Amazing. Yeah, it's just the talent you are, you know, and the next generation, you know, I've always said, Kyle Larson, 
he, he reminds me of you. He can get in in any dirt car, be competitive, one in a modified the other night, was racing across the street at Talladega um, just last night. I always said, he, with the size of him, I'm going to enter him in a Kentucky Derby. Let's see how he does. <laughs> I guarantee he's got a shot to win that, too. Uh, Kyle's just one of those, I, of my whole career, he is the best that I have ever seen in my career. He, he's just a plug-and-play kid that... All he knows how to do is go fast and get 100% every lap out of the, every race car that he drives. Kyle Larson right now 20th in this pack, but only one second off of the lead. Uh, Noah Gregson has fought his way up to third place, Jamie. Doing a really nice job for the 24-year-old from Las Vegas. Noah Gregson, third time here to Talladega. Third different team he's driven for. Of course, he's with Legacy Motor Club now, and Jimmy Johnson's one of his bosses. But this is his thing, super speedway races. He won here in Xfinity last year. He knows how to get it done. Perhaps today could be the 42nd. Oh, day. and he turned and Burton. He turned the Burton slides down to the bottom of the racetrack and keeps it down on the apron. Right oh. in front of the field, Austin Dillon spun around as well. Check, oh, heavy damage on that car. I think that was Todd Gilliland. At least three cars involved. And Austin Dillon may have gotten the worst of it. He's been Gregson had been drafting Burton for the last eight or 10 laps and apparently gave him just one shove too many. I think that toe link's broke right there, bent at least. But when we see this replay, we're gonna see how good a job Harrison Burton did of saving that car, I mean, that thing had 18 opportunities to be totally backwards, upside down, you name it. And you watch, he does a great job of getting this thing gathered in. He's got a draft, probably one bump too many. A little bit on the right side, right as he's entering that corner, getting into three, maybe came around on him. Like you said, though, phenomenal job. Now you see everybody checking up back here. You start checking up, the first thing you do is look in that mirror and make sure you're not going to get run over. Unfortunately, that's what happened for Austin Dillon. Caution out for the fifth time today at Talladega as Noah Grigson inadvertently turns Harrison Burton. Under caution for the fifth time today in the Geico 500 from Talladega on Fox. There is the content, uh, contact between two drivers that have a history. Harrison Burton and Noah Gregson got into a fight at Kentucky after the Xfinity Series race there in 2020. 
You saw Zane Smith checking up, getting uh, hit by Joey Logano. That sent Smith up into Austin Dillon, and then Austin Hill uh, comes in. Further damage, so at yeah, least five cars involved here. I hear you, MJ. The baby just came around on him. That's what he's saying. You know, you said that about a fight. Uh, I, I'm not going to put that on Noah. I no. think that was just, uh, you know, trying to progress. It's something that he'd been doing, Tony, for several laps. Unfortunately, that time he just came around for Harrison. No, but they do have a history. Regan. Mike Kirchie Booty Barker told Bubba Wallace, four and a half seconds of fuel is all we need. Once you get going, save, save, save every ounce you can. Josh? Eric Almarola had a car strong enough to win here in 2018. They feel like they got something strong enough to do it again. Just fuel for the 10 car, JB. Same thing for Noah Gregson in the 42. No mention of what happened in the contact afterwards. 12 of Blaney, fuel only for him. He's led six laps so far today. And here's your race off pit road sponsored by Ram. Ryan Blaney out front. So at least five cars caught up in this. Not intentional. An in inadvertent push from Noah Gregson turns Harrison Burton and others pile in. Now, as we go through... Re it's just right. Where Miller kind of set a scene, you know, together. It was kind of penalty. No idea why, uh, why we spun this. When I watched this replay, I thought that I saw that. Now we're going to listen to Noah Gregson, the other side of this. I think I got him right where that bump was. It's all good. It is what it is. No problem. Focus forward. He's all right. That's forward. Well, what that bump is, is they put a tunnel in a couple of years ago and had to repave this. And the tunnel repave is right here. You can see this area right here. Watch this line right here. When he gets to this, the car bounces right as it, no, it gets to him. Bounces, unloads, away she goes. Unfortunate for Harrison, doing a great job, nothing he could do. The good news is that car's not tore up. 
That was a great save to yes, keep that was. car from sliding back up the racetrack into traffic. Unbelievable save. I mean, it with the rack and pinion steering that they have now, it is a lot harder to catch these cars than it used to be when it had a steering box in it. And he just does a great job. He doesn't panic, doesn't overreact. Stayed in the fuel pretty good. Yeah, doesn't lock the brakes up and upset the car. He just kind of went with it. And The biggest thing is he didn't go up the racetrack. Yeah. He stayed in the fuel, kept that thing spinning, kept turning left. You know, that's the last thing you want to do. You junk your car if you overcorrect and get up in front of everybody. There's no question you'll be out of the race. Did a good job saving. Now, of the others, drivers involved, Austin Dillon out of race. Zane Smith checked and released at the care center. USFL action continues tonight on FS1. The Michigan Panthers take on the Philadelphia Stars, and it all kicks off at 7 Eastern on FS1. Chase Briscoe will get the free pass on this, the fifth caution flag of the day. So he will be uh, back on the lead lap, 34 lead lap cars. Zane Smith and Austin Dillon, the only two cars out of the race with 42 to go. Larry, 42 to go. That sounds an awful lot like the edge of the pit window, doesn't it? I mean, it's right there on it. It couldn't be any closer, Mike. We had a number of cars that just came back to pit road, and we got the one to go, like Joey Logano, like Eric Jones, Brad Keselowski, Chris Buescher. They topped off, making sure it's completely full. I feel good about them being able to make it to the end, but you heard them talking. Jamie Little and Regan Smith reported it, and Josh Sims. Save, save, save the minute they were leaving their pit box. Well, four of the Toyotas have found their way to the front of the pack, and three of them will line up together on the outside against two Fords and a Chevrolet on the inside lane after the choose. Well, if I'm close on fuel, I probably don't want to be leading. You know, this is the one time as, as a race car driver you're going to want to be, you get a second lane, third row. Might not be a bad option right now. I can save you quite a bit of gas running around there, you know, somewhere to 70 to 50% to throttle. Ford Mustang pace car on pit road. And here we go. It'll be 41 to go as they take the restart green. Green, green, green. Denny Hamlin. Walk inside of you, sir. Walk inside of you. Pass back to your help. That's Chris Lambert, Denny Hamlin spotter. He'll pass the park. One to Bart. They are separated. Nine cars behind the 19. 19's on you. They're closing behind Martin. We're wide open in front of Bubba. 19's with you tight. Something we saw earlier today, you look where those louvers are. You talk about the negative pressure on the hoods. You see that separation. I mean, it is picking that hood up a solid inch gap. It tells you how much air is moving off of those cars in front of you. It's literally trying to suck the hood off of it. That is a huge gap. I mean, that's flush, and you'll see it get flush here in a second. But to sit there and have that much vacuum to pull that hood up like that's incredible. They also have little magnets that go around those louvers to help keep that hood down. That's why that hood, you know, it'll pull up like that, but it'll also go right back into place because of that. Well, when you're flying home after the race today, your plane will lift off the runway at a speed about 30 to 40 miles an hour slower than these cars are going right now. I hope mine does. <laughs> <laughs> I gave away all my money, so I couldn't, uh, can't afford that fuel right now, Tony. That's how much I love my people. You, hey, you, you drank away that money. You didn't give it away. No, Fox <laughs> Bet Super 6, I gave it away. $25,000. Seven players are still alive in today's Fox Bet Super 6 contest to win $25,000 of Clint's cash. Come on, guys. I hope you get it. Get this kid's money. <laughs> hey! One, I hope I'm one of those seven. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of bus fuel. <laughs> Start All to right. see this third row. How yep. about it? They are formed, but is there any, any energy back there behind Eric Jones? Same exact one, Eric Jones. Same exact one that formed that line last time. Drove it all the way to the front, which is the reason Bubba Wallace is there to, to begin with. 
Bubba moved up right in front of Eric, stalled his line out, but it all it, it did what it needed to do for Bubba, put him right in the lead. I like that Eric has at least taken the chance. You can't go forward following him, so make an attempt. And he, and he was successful for a while. He's got a good group. He's got William Byron behind him. He's got Suarez behind him. Those are good hot rods. William Byron was one of those that took four tires on that last pit stop. Now, tires haven't made a huge difference here, but we'll see. You know, I, I oh, huge shot. That would be Priest in front of him, moved up, made that line. Now the middle stacking up. See, they checked up. Now here he comes. This just like last time, the middle stacked up and that outside line came and it pushed whoever was leading it all the way to the front. And that was Bubba Wallace. This is where you make make up or lose positions now. I mean, you get you get these stack ups like this and get the lines alternating. That's when you can start making some big moves. How about Ty Gibbs? Haven't talked about him much. Found his way to the front of that middle line. Yeah, he jumped up uh, to what was the outside line. Now the middle. Starting to see some moving, some shaking and baking. 37 to go. It's go time, Tony. He is becoming 11, 19 in line with you. the Iceman. I know he's a rookie, but you listen to his interviews. You listen to him on the radio. Very calm, a very calm demeanor. Not a lot of emotion shown, plus or minus. It's I'm here to do my job. I'm going to do it the best I can. Let me go do it. I'm not sold it's the same kid. There ain't uh -huh. no way it's the same kid as running that Xfinity race. Last year, he was the man to watch in that Xfinity. He was all over the place, a wild one. He's got found his home in this Cup Series, yep. and his demeanor is very calm. He won the championship there last year and moved on. Now the leading rookie in the Cup Series. 36 laps to go. Let's take you side by side.
Gibbs moved around quite a bit there. He's got to be careful not to do that. He drove it around. 33 laps to go. What a race we're seeing at Talladega. Ryan Blaney in a Ford on the bottom. Ryan Priest in a Ford on the top. And four Toyotas lined up nose to tail in the middle, led by Ty Gibbs. Very impressive with that outside line. Obviously, you see Ty Gibbs moving to the Ford. But Eric Jones, the combination of Eric Jones, William Byron, Suarez have been pushing that 41 oh so close to the inside. What's cool about this is I think Priest probably wants to get up. If he can get up to the front one more time, get clear, he's going to move down and find them Fords on the bottom but those four Toyotas in the middle that's a strong package there's the Hunt Brothers pizza cam showing you the push from Eric Jones Priest had one opportunity uh, as you saw in our side-by-side -side coverage where he could have dropped down in front of Ty Gibbs chose not to chose to stay with that line that brought him to the front up top well I don't think that's the line I'm talking about if I'm Priest I'm going to get with my Fords on yeah. the bottom all the way down that's not an option First of all, I got to get back to that scenario again, but I think he can off the bumper of Eric Jones. That car is extremely fast. That top line lost a little energy there, but it's starting to build back up, starting to get some of that momentum back. It just, it's just weird how easy it doesn't take much, it seems like, to stall that top line out. Strong combination on the bottom right here. Blaney yeah. and Almarola. That Almarola is a really good plate racer. He talked about being smart. Smart, I like where he's at. He's learning about this tandem deal, getting better at that. But he's running in a line on that bottom where you have an out. I've always said on these super speedways, if you want to, you need to ride on the bottom and you want to, uh, if you want to get up there and make moves, you make them on the outside. They're going to be in trouble on that bottom though. Those two got away from the pack. I'm not so sure that that middle lane's not going to have a run here. You talked about energy. For whatever reason, the same energy that built that outside line drove it clear to the front, matching the front row. It just dies out. It's, it's like it lives for two or three laps and it's gone. Now you saw on the throttle trace there, Blaney easing the throttle to back up to Almirola so they don't lose touch with each other. Blaney knows how to win here. He's been to victory lane twice. Well, he's also probably trying to save a little bit of fuel. He's the only one in a scenario where he has to go wide open. But when you do that, look what you're doing. You're slowing your line down, and look what, who's not doing that. They're wide open. Gibbs and, and uh, Bubba Wallace definitely wide open pushing like that. That's pretty heads up driving by Blaney. You can actually do that in the lead. You don't have to hold it wide open, but you will slow that line down, and then that creates a lot of accordion, if you will, and bouncing back and forth, and ultimately ruins the success of the line. But boy, does it take discipline to do that. I mean, to, to know that you want to stay in that lead, you want to make sure you stay in far in, as far in front of that middle and outside line as you can, to sit there and have the discipline to just roll out enough to save a little, that's impressive. You know, with the new EFI, you know, back in the day, we had to drag our brake, which literally, you know, holding your foot on a brake and drag your brake because they didn't want you um, to ride part throttle or burn a valve. With the EFI data and all the things that you have, you don't have to worry about that now, so they can lift um, because it, it adjusts the fuel rate, you know, appropriately. Larry, what are you seeing in the throttle traces? Well, what I'm seeing, Ty Gibbs in that 54, wide open all the way around this racetrack. Ryan Blaney in the 12, not wide open at all. More about like 70 to 80 percent. So I'd say Ryan's probably just kind of managing, you know, without having to move around, he's managing those lines. He, he knows he get, he's probably faster leading on the bottom, but he needs to save fuel to make sure he gets himself to the end. And if he can do that without sacrificing that top lane going by, he, he's doing a great job. Hard to think of a Talladega race as an economy run, but if we stay green, it could become just that. 28 laps to go at the fastest speedway on earth. Ryan Blaney, Eric Almarola out front.
Ryan Blaney leading the Geico 500 with 24 laps to go at Talladega. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. Ricky Stenhouse has made a third lane way up on the high side. And uh, they are formed up and trying to gain a little ground here with Corey LaJoy. He's got help from Justin Haley. Joey Logano is up there trying to work their way back to the front. Rush hour. Yeah, and Ricky's pretty good at knowing how to side draft. The hard part is when there's a car tucked in the, with the guy that you're trying to side draft, if there's a car behind that car, it makes it hard. It will actually pull you back instead of you pulling the car in front back. Look how the race shook up, though. We were talking about Priest just, what, five laps ago? Literally going for the lead on the outside off the back bumper of Eric Jones. They lost that, deteriorated. He went clear back uh, to mid-pack in the middle. Um, it was... Uh, Eric Jones was the same way, and then it was also, um, who am I trying to think of? The 99 car, I will just say that. Suarez. Daniel Suarez was the <laughs> other one, and I just saw him. We were talking about this before the race, strategies. All right, when's the right time, and when is the juice worth the squeeze? Suarez bailed all the way out of the thing, and you see him just riding in the pack in case the big one happens. Yeah, he is 30th right now in that purple car. Yeah, you, you literally have a decision at this point of you have to do everything you can to get yourself forward or you got to be in defense mode. Absolutely. But there's absolutely nothing in between right now. You're either on one or the other. 33 cars in the lead draft separated by just one and a quarter seconds. And if you're Ryan Priest, you're, you're thinking to yourself, man, what did I do wrong there? We were talking about it. Didn't necessarily do anything wrong. It's just the movement of the race. Tony, you told me in the pre-race, you know, you have to be able to call audibles because things change. There's an audible. Put that one in the book. Don't make that mistake again. But you're probably going to have to. If you're going to pass and get the, the, you know, the track position back, more than likely, somehow, you're going to have to make that outside work like Stenhouse is trying to take advantage of now. In these 33 cars, I can't point to one that I don't think could win this race. Well, you're going to if the big one happens, you know, where's it going to happen from? We've talked about Bo Wallace's car. There's a rookie right in front of him. Those cars are very loose, light on our feet underneath of them. If that wreck comes there, all these boys back there with this track position problem, it's going to land right in their lap. There's a big shot. Ty That's Gibbs, exactly, exactly what, what I'm talking about. about. It happened yesterday in the Xfinity race. Daniel Hemrick was leading. Uh, he came down through a late block. It was too late, and he spun in half the field. And was look, how, up. look how much momentum because of that, how it, how it slowed the momentum of that center line down enough for Ricky and that, that third line to get some momentum. Yeah, that's a great point, Tony. A big slam like that, a big bump draft, it's not efficient. It slows everything down. It gets that uh, jumble going on, and then here comes the outside line with a lot of momentum. That's the opportunity that Ricky Stenhouse and, and LaJoy there are looking for. You're trying to match the speeds together. The, like you say, the big run, the problem is the car that hits it, it slows that car down, pushes the other car forward. You need those cars to be very, very similar in speed to average out and keep pushing. Exactly like Almirola is doing. He is doing a great job of matching those speeds and keeping that efficiency on that bottom line. 20 to go, and this is still anybody's race. Watch the 11 get to the 23 here. 23 slowly. I think he did a better job of managing that. It's the gap in Chase Elliott and Truex now. Now watch, as soon as those get together, start bumping, that bump draft, excuse me, the tandem off of LaJoy will start coming to the front and using that opportunity. Ricky was able to pull the nine at Chase Elliott back a little bit and, and get that pull from him. It pulled the nine back, but it also slowed that line down because of it. Ryan Blaney had led only 22 laps this season. His last win came on one of these super speedways. He's been out front for more than 25 today. The only driver to lead as many laps or more, Bubba Wallace. Ricky's doing a good job of getting a hold of some side draft action, slowing that group down on the inside of him and giving the opportunity to the cars behind him, LaJoy, to give him a better push. And Corey LaJoy in the seven. He's come within one lap of winning one of these super speedway races. And then you just 
saw Daniel Suarez actually go. It's not doesn't have to be contact of two guys side by side, but the third guy can get that thing disrupted. How about that? He actually got in front of Gibbs there on the inside in the middle row. Talking about Stenhouse. Yeah, something happened in that middle row, and boy, they have lost touch but with the leaders. He didn't give up on him. He didn't give up on his on his partner there, LaJoy. He had the clear down. Could have went down in front of Gibbs and elected not to do it. But I think what slowed that middle lane down was when we saw Ricky side draft in the nine car. When he was able to slow Chase Elliott down, that, that pulled that whole group back to him. It's kind of like a chain is how I describe it. You want to keep slack out of the chain. Keep the links tight, and that's where you're going to find your speed and efficiency. That, that is probably the best way I've ever heard anybody describe it. But that's exactly right. Larry with 17 to go for these drivers running out front full throttle. What is the fuel situation? Yeah, I mean, it's right there on it, Mike, but I'm also using my fuel predictor, and that, that base is off what we're seeing with throttle position. And right now with 17 to go, as long as everybody is full, they should be able to make it to the end. All right, Jamie? Well, it's interesting to see Ryan Blaney continue to lead here. I talked to his crew chief, Jonathan Hassler, this morning. He said, we've positioned ourselves with a little bit different setup, something that gives us more speed, but we'll lose some of the handling. And as long as it doesn't get so bad, we're going to be OK today. And Ryan really hasn't said much about the handling of that race car. Now, as far as their fuel situation, they are right on their number, they're saying, meaning they're good to go to the end, but not an overtime. Two Fords at the front. Toyota's in the outside lane. Six Chevrolets in the top 10. 16 laps to go, and a lot can happen. I think, again, much like Priest, Ricky's probably thinking to himself about two laps ago, man, maybe I should have pulled down there in front of Gibbs when I had an opportunity. Trying to rebuild that momentum on the outside. Get some dancing partners up there. You're going to have to have more cars than two or three to get it done. Yeah, he's got LaJoy and Jones, but they're not really formed up. And now he loses Jones. It's all that top line's just breaking apart right now. Yep. I, I still think at some point somebody's going to try it. They're going to have to. I mean, if you can't ride around in the back half of this pack and be safe and be in a position to get a good finish out of it, you're going to have to regroup. I see that yellow car of Joey Logano about halfway back in that second lane. That's somebody that I would predict that I could see in these last 10 laps that makes a move like that. Logano rebounding from that speeding penalty, but he's in contention. Larry, you got some trends for me? You better believe I've got them, Clint. So I looked at the last six spring Talladega races. That's since we've been doing stage racing. The average of the last caution comes with 15 laps to go, about where we're at right now. But of those six races, four times in the final five laps, three times we had an overtime finish, but all time at Talladega, 17 overtime finishes. You good with those trends, Clint? Uh, whoa! <laughs> Hold on to it, Ty Gibbs. I'd say by what we just saw there, yeah, that's pretty solid. Well, that would be the big question is who's going to be around for overtime? Well, here's the hard part. We're talking yeah. about that desperation and stuff like that, trends that you just told me, Larry. But the other side of that is what if it doesn't happen? I have to go. I can't ride around here thinking if I'm Suarez in the back, I, I'm not going to just ride around thinking that they're going to wreck because it did that exact same thing happened last year. They didn't wreck. And then, uh oh, now I didn't even make an effort. Now you're mad at yourself, beating yourself up on the plane ride home. Well, that's why we say you got to call audibles. You've got to call what you see, the scenario that you're in the middle of and, and run your race according to that. You can't sit there and go. You can't play off of the what if scenarios. No. So right about now, there's at least 20 drivers who are all thinking, what do I do right now or in these next five or eight laps to put myself in a position to win? Ty Gibbs is doing a fantastic job on that outside. He's got three dancing partners behind him, all allies. He's doing a great job leading that line. It was just, what, three laps ago, two laps ago, that that thing was way back. The bottom line was smoking them. All of a sudden, here they are, door-to-door -door again with the inside line. Well, all those drivers that were in the top lane are now in that second lane, so they've got strength in numbers again. Built the energy you were talking about.
I don't think that Lambert does this to you. I don't think the 12 or the 54 can make it. I think everyone else can. That's interesting. That was uh, Denny Hamlin's radio. Well, the 54 is in front of you, Denny. And the 12 is in front of the other line. Liking what he sees. I want to see his heart rate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, Chris Gabehart's looking at the same data I'm looking at. And Ty Gibbs, to his point, I mentioned it earlier, he is not lifting whatsoever, but I still continue to see Blaney playing with the throttle a lot in that 12 car. I bet you hear a lot of radio chatter, probably telling that boy, hey, pull them reins back in this thoroughbred. I know she'll run, but I need you to save me some fuel. But now let's look on the inside. Noah Gregson, Kevin Harvick, they have been riding right there these last dozen or so laps behind the duo of Blaney and Almirola. And somewhere there, they've got to be thinking, what do I need to do and where can I get track position or where can I get enough track width to be able to dart inside a route and make a move on the leaders. If you watch the inside line, it has a lot of slack in the chain, just like I was talking about. And I think it is because that 12 car is running around their part throttle. I think it's back in that line up and there forces them to constantly run over each other and they keep bouncing back and forth, can't keep the chain tight. Well, the driver I think who is holding the cards is Almirola. He is second on the inside, exactly where he was oh. on the last lap of stage two, which he won. And did you see, look at the connectivity on the inside. That thing really got together and it was because Blaney was wide open all the way down the back straightaway. Here comes Chase. Christopher Bell's wanting that outside line. Third lane's back alive, folks. 10 to go. You're getting ready to get more takers on that too. This is what we all came for. It's why we love this track. And this is what everybody in that middle lane from about fourth on back was kept looking for is when's the outside line going to go? Now, and where can I fit in? How about this? Ty Gibbs and company, everybody moved to that outside wow. line, shut that off. That's another great move. And great Denny, decision. Denny really initiated that. I mean, the 19 was kind of there, but Denny was the one that kind of pulled all those guys up there. As soon as he moved, the 23 moved. As soon as the 23 went, 54 followed. Lapping Chase Austin Elliott. Hill. Sorry, yep. Chase Elliott with his teammate Bowman has found each other. Keep an eye on that duel. Elliott made a couple of sharp moves, one to the top and then the next one to get to the middle lane and get position behind Truex. Out front. See all that moving, all the decisions that are made, the crunch time on the outside, all the while Blaney and Almirola, Noah Gregson on the bottom down there, Kevin Harvick, easy peasy, just stay in line, keep doing what you're doing. Now the outside lane's in trouble because Reddick is leading the outside, his nose is damaged, that's not going to help them advance. No, that's not what Christopher Bell needs at all, he probably ought to spit him out. You need that car pushing, that's the only thing he can do. Look, it's actually drug. The, the nose is actually caved in and drug the splitter off of it. And your point about Blaney and, and Amarola and Gregson, they don't have an option. There isn't anywhere else for, else for those guys to go. The 54 gives, he's got that middle line. If he needs to move up to the top line, if that third line develops again, he has options. Those guys on the bottom, they're stuck. They got all their chips in one pot on that bottom right now. And because of that, can manage this, the conversations we're talking about, saving fuel and things like that. Now, those first four have an option because there isn't, the, the 54 is not up there yet. But once that 54 car gets to the 12, they don't, that inside line just doesn't have an option. They've got to work with each other to maintain that speed. Man, I think Eric's sitting exactly where he wants to sit. You know, going back to that stage win, the timing aspect of how he did that, that was textbook, and it came from that very position he's in right here. Don't get out too far. Six laps to go. How about this? That happened on the third lane. Got Reddick out of the lead. Here they come. LaJoy's up there. The chain's going to get bigger. Joy's thinking about moving up. Joy's probably not in the best scenario with those two teammates in front of him. Here comes momentum. Is he going to take it? No, stays in line. He definitely was looking at it. I'm surprised he didn't take it. 
Corey LaJoy's car kind of stalled out there. They had some momentum uh, down the straightaway, but not so much into the corner in that top lane. Have to go with the line, five more. Middle lane's kind of dying out. Just like you talked about, Tony, I think it is that energy. When that third lane starts to build, it takes those cars out of the center line, and the center one really struggles. Now Joey's up. Joey says, forget it. I'm go oh, he's oh. turned. He is turned. Logano in the wall. LaJoy and Stenhouse bring the caution out for the sixth time. I saw it. He was thinking about it earlier, decided to go for it. Just like that. Gets turned around, could not hold on to it. A lot of damage to the Daytona 500 winner Stenhouse. Now, is this the caution I was needing? Save you fuel, Larry? Right side Definitely. damage for the joy. Does it create more issues or does it save us? Well, you got to be saving from the minute this caution came out because again, we very well may go into overtime here. And like Jamie Little reported, uh, a lot of drivers were right on the window, but not for overtime. Here's Joy moves up. Sees the run coming, big run by the way. As Soon as he touches him, man, it didn't take much. He, he, just, ju he just needed LaJoy to, to wait a half a beat longer to get off the transition from the banking down to the back stretch before he made contact there and they would have been okay. It's like Suarez got a little bit of that too right there. Maybe a lot of it. Yeah, another 100 feet would, would totally have changed that scenario right there. Look at the move, heads up move by Chastain. Reckon behind you, went for it, moved to the outside and gained some positions there before that caution came out. That's heads up racing. That is a long slide. Yes. Let's go to our Goodyear aerial coverage and watch Logano. Yellow car in the top lane, 22. This starts with that 36 car right there on his left rear. And as soon as he gets it, it pulls him back, kills that momentum. The seven car LaJoy gets to him. Can't do anything from there. Riley Herbst got a piece of that also in the 15. See how violently hard that wheel ripped to the right as soon as it got in the wall. Another good job of letting go of that thing. These cars having a rack and pinion steering very strong. Break your wrist if you're not careful. You don't want to get your thumbs caught in the spokes either. Six caution flag of the day for Joey Logano's crash. P.J. McLeod will get the free pass. We'll rack them and restart when we come back.
Everybody wants to make it to the finish of this one. So repair is underway. There's Corey LaJoy's car on pit road. And you saw Joey Logano's. Harrison Burton has also gone a lap down. And William Byron, uh, along with Daniel Suarez, had some damage in this one as well. Logano exits pit road and he is being shown one lap down. Suarez stays out. Pit road is open and there are very few takers. Josh? Here with the crew chief of the 10 car, Drew Blinkensdurfer, Eric Amarola currently in second. First of all, how you guys feeling about your fuel window and also about your shot to come away with the win at the end of this? Yeah, I think our fuel's okay. He, uh, the 12 and us, we were kind of saving fuel that whole time. Um, the guys around us weren't, so uh, I, I, we're kind of deciding on what row we pick based on their fuel situation. Um, I think we're okay. We're okay until at least a green-white checker or maybe two of those. But are fast so we're trying to get the Smithfield Ford kind of in, in with those guys so that we can we can hopefully sorry I got them talking every year here hopefully we can get with the fastest guys to give us the best shot and and then down the back into turn three uh, it's every man for themselves. Thanks Drew. Regan? <laughs> well Kevin Harvick's crew chief Rodney Childers. Rodney your eight, Kevin's 800 start you guys still don't have that Speedway win together you're low on fuel lots to think about right now what do you tell your driver as we get to the end here? Yeah, we're a little closer than what we want to be for sure. But, uh, you know, with being fourth and having a shot of winning this thing on this 800 start, we're going to go for it. And what happens is what happens. But if we get another caution, we're going to have to come put some fuel in it. Good luck, Rodney. Thanks. Did you see Drew Blickensturfer's headset? He had four different wires to it carrying audio to him, three different talk buttons, and Josh's microphone. He was a busy boy. Mine has that. Just yeah. doesn't have any wires on it. <laughs> 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 They're sparking. <laughs> All right, let's uh, have another look from the aerial and keep an eye on Joey Logano's car and the white lines as he comes up the racetrack. So we've got three there. The 48 actually stalls out Joey. That lets the 36 get to his left rear. As soon as he gets right there, you can see it pull Joey back. The seven car gets a run. Unfortunately, just gets to him just a tick too early, right where the transition of the banking flattens out. Gets him sideways. Didn't take much. I was surprised by that. Just Harrison Burton hitting the inside wall. They've made repairs, uh, but he is now two laps down. Dang it. Yep. Did such a great job leading this pack. Was up front. Got turned around. Now our day's done. Saving that fuel. You heard him going around there with no... Ignition on. It's going to shut it off again, build some speed up, saving that fuel we're talking about. All right, let's listen in on uh, Blaney's team about the choose. They got a few more Chevy back there versus like those four or five gift cards that were lined up. I don't know if they feel like I picked the bottom. Maybe the 10 coming with me. 42 probably takes the front row, and maybe the four even comes with us, so we can have three of us lined up, possibly. Not asking them to do anything. I'm just he wasn't looking up thinking he was looking up in the mirror and, and having that conversation with his spotter watching it looking in the cars and who's behind him and what he thinks they're going to do some former super speedway winners for whom it's been a while McDowell Haley Kozlowski Almarola and yes, Blaney. And Austin Sindrick. And most of that group are in it to win it here. Well, I think those two right there are certainly the favorite in that category, but you never know what's going to happen. I do know that there's going to be runs and there's going to be blocks. Saw that yesterday. When it comes down to it, you have to go and you get ahead of steam coming and they make a block, it's going to be a big one. Brad, Brad, seeing Brad in there, you know, we, we were had him on the pre-race, Tony. I, I thought that we'd see more of him today. Yeah, him and Chris Bush are both. I mean, they were so strong at Daytona, especially in the qualifying races that I agree. I mean, they he's such a good restrictor plate driver. Uh, when they were at Penske together, him and Joey just really 
knew how to get the job done. But it's it's been interesting to to watch how he struggled today, and both of those RFK cars have struggled. Well, I guess what I'm getting at, though, it, it was his confidence that he had in his car. Here comes a choose. This is going to be important, folks. Pay attention here. You heard Blaney talk about going to the bottom. I think you're exactly what I was hoping to see. Eric going with him, following suit. How about Noah? Let's go it. Now we're gambling. Chastain's out there. Larson. Gregson and Chastain. Chevy's to the outside. Ford's to the inside. Uh, for the most part, up at the front of the pack. This would be huge. You put that Noah Gregson in victory lane here, you're going to see a celebration. Hear him shutting it off, saving as much fuel as possible. You're going to see massive pushes out of Chastain. Saw it in the uh, first stage. That car was very aggressive with his pushing, very capable. Noah, you better hold on and be ready, buddy. And I did not mean to imply that he got into Harrison Burton on purpose. It was just he caught him right at that bump and Burton went around. All I was saying is it will not improve the uh, possibility of them exchanging Christmas cards this year, <laughs> yeah. which they haven't for some time. Yeah, and, then, and that's something that's important. That was not an intentional deal no. in turn three. That's just it's just this bad timing. And it's a rookie driver. He's going to learn from that. He's going to see what he'll watch the replay of this race. He'll see how the other veteran drivers were handling that scenario getting into turn three and he'll learn from it. 800 starts in this. Oh, no, that's Priest. I'm sorry. Yes. I always see that Hunt Brothers and think Harvick. I'm still going to sell Harvick. 800 starts. That is an amazing an amazing career that he's had. Delano that one has been by on. his side with every one of them. Yeah. And so far, only one cup driver has won in his 800th start, Richard Petty at Dover, Delaware. Harvick would be the second if he can pull it off today. That's what it's all about. They're fixing to get their money's worth right here. Pace car makes the hard left turn to pit road and it's overtime sponsored by Credit One Bank. Be watching for this fuel. Push comes to shove, and Gregson's in the wall. Larson's around. And Larson up the racetrack oh, in traffic, hard. and he collects Priest. Priest. Hard hit. Good grief. Saw that. He got to pushing him hard. Chastain was pushing Noah very hard, but wasn't patient. Was ready to go right off the bat. Turns him around right into the fence, right in front of everybody. Tony, hard hit on your car right there. Very hard hit for Priest. Got in the side of the 10 car, too. I don't think there's much damage there. Now, what's this do for my fuel? Am I going to run out of gas, Larry? You heard Rodney Childers say that Harvick's going to have to pit. No question. This definitely puts some of them in a little bit of a predicament. Absolutely. Well, the good thing on fuel is they didn't have to run close to a full lap at speed before the caution came out. He's got some damage on the right front. Is that car skewed just a bit? Well, they naturally put that skew in it for the, the restrictor plate tracks, but the right front does have a little damage. AMR safety team very quickly to Ryan Priest's aid. And man, they do a great job. We, we don't discount how much they help us in this sport. All right, now Noah Gregson, you'll see the one drop to the middle here. Well, you see a big push out of the five into the one. That got Noah sideways, got him up the track a little bit. Chastain saw the window, wasn't much of a door, and he tried to take it. Wrecked him. Oh, Larson That's slid up hit. the racetrack and Priest coming at full speed. That's a bummer for Noah. Have that opportunity there. Didn't even get a chance to really make much of it. Well, just had a little too much movement when he got pushed, and, and it unfortunately oh, got him man, into the outside and, and opened that door. That is a huge hit. Let's uh, ride with Noah Gregson.
A lot of energy when Chastain hit him. That five was, was on Chastain extremely hard. One car bumping you is one thing. When two of them together do it, it's a whole nother bump draft. All right, this is Ryan Priest. Oh, oh he actually throttled up. Tried to get there. Tried to get through it before he before the five got up. Whew. We were lucky this was only a four car pileup. Yeah, he just gets, you know, gets that push in the corner and it just gets him up just enough to open the door for the one car and off we go. How about this? All right, they had to road. come. Pit Road's Harvick open. came. Levin, Denny Hamlin's down here. Chastain, he's on pit road. That's a hard call to make. Had to do it. Some of, that means a couple of them are out there gambling. Larry, that's quite a minority of lead lap cars to come to pit road in this situation. Well, I go back to what Rodney Childers, crew chief for Kevin Harvick, told us. He said, if we have another overtime, we've got to come. He yep. had his mind already made up. And here's some Kyle Busch audio. The problem is, is they're not going to red flag this thing. Pit, 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 Too late. No, no reason to red flag it. The track is not blocked. As we said, it was on. It was a four-car pileup. It was not the big one. Noah can get now. They're having trouble. Noah can't get his car around to pit road. This is going to take even more time. Might add another lap to this. Kyle There's Larson's one, car hauled off. There's one thing that you never you never lack for and that's excitement at the end of these races at Talladega. I mean, some of the most exciting finishes in the sport happen right here and this is going to be another one of them. Gregson, a wave to the crowd that he's okay. Gave it his all. Came up short today. Larry, now they were counting on getting this thing back going. This might add another lap. You think might see another couple of these guys have to bail out? Well, it sounded like Randall Burnett was ready for Kyle Busch and that eight car to come on when pit road was open. And it uh, looked like to me, I'm seeing maybe a few more. Maybe I see Harvick, who's already been in pit road. Kyle Busch did stay out in the eight. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, this is putting some of them in a very unusual situation, bad situation, especially trying to get up through the gears on this restart. Check this out. I said as a hard hit, look at the door bars in there. That's actually the roll cage that was bent and broke up. I have never seen that before. Massive hit right there. Well, he slid up the racetrack. Uh, we heard Ryan Priest uh, hit on the brake, then throttle up to try to get away. Here it is again. Wow. Listen, it wouldn't have mattered if he throttled up or didn't right. throttle up. That contact was going to happen anyway. It just, that just was a bad scenario. Well, don't forget. Oh, I told you that's a hard hit. You think these boys ain't tough? I'm telling you, that's a shot. I'm telling you, he is, he is going to be sore tomorrow. A four-car pileup in overtime extends the GEICO 500. We'll try overtime one more time here at Talladega. 
And we were we were just discussing the view we had from Ryan Priest's onboard was better than the view he had. He had cars to the left of him and may well not have seen Kyle Larson coming back across. Well, the yeah, track. I mean, you're on a roof camera. You know, you're probably a, a foot and a half uh, higher than him. He may not have seen that five car. Probably heard his spotter say they're spinning low, sped up a little bit. All of a sudden, last minute, you see him, and it's too late. Yeah, but I, again, I want to stress the fact that it didn't matter whether he was on the gas or off the gas. That contact right. was still going to happen. There so just we'll, wasn't any way getting around that. Jamie, what's the leader's fuel situation? Yeah, listening to Ryan Blaney talk to his team, and, and they said, get on the flat right now. Save as much as you can. Get off the banking. He said, am I going to make it two laps? They said, it's going to be close. Who boy. Well, who's to say it's just going to be two laps, too? Well, if one person runs out of gas, it's definitely going to be more than two laps because we're going to have another big wreck. Well, you're sitting here looking the car right behind us. Randall Burnett, you heard him say pit. We're, we're not going to make it. And he stayed out on that racetrack. That one's tight. So the first driver in the field that got fuel under this caution is William Byron in 18th, then Christopher Bell in 20th and all the drivers behind him. Well, I just talked about Brad Keselowski and the fact it really hadn't seen him. All it takes is that one opportunity. Now it's right here for the taking. Finds himself in a position. Kyle Larson checked and released from the infield care center. That's good to hear. Uh, Noah Gregson and Ryan Priest uh, are there now. You saw how hard he got hit. Saw the end car of Ryan. Oh. He, the other one. That side impacts, you feel those. You saw them roll bars. I knew when I saw the roll bars bent that bad. That's as, about as hard as I've seen with these cars. The good thing about the door bar bending like that, though, it, it absorbed a lot of energy. But I'm, I'm glad it wasn't on the driver's side. And the other thing that you saw broke loose on the bottom, the foam, big, big foam uh, you know, block in there, all energy absorbing safety features. Here we go, guys. All right, let's try this again. Blaney and Almarola on the inside. Kyle Busch, Bubba Wallace up top. Green, white, checker. Here we go. Gibbs out of gas. As soon as he got to the fuel, she let, uh, let go on him. Who else is going to run out? Look what it did to that bottom line. Look at Keselowski right behind Bubba. Keep an eye on that. Will Bubba try to make a move here? Kyle Busch moved up to the outside for the restart, and now he's in position to steal one here. First time he has led today. Eric, Almirola moves up. Almirola may be low on gas. He could be, I think so. Sparks flying from underneath Almirola's car, though, as he drifts back. I think it, that's damage from Chastain moved to the middle, got into the side of him a little bit. Kozlowski gave Bubba a bump to the lead. White flag. Next flag ends the race. Down, 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 oh, down. big push. Blaine turns Bubba. him around, goes oh, Bubba. Oh, into Kozlowski. Around. Oh, another hard shot. Almendinger. Caution waves with Kyle Bush in front. Look at the carnage. This is the big one. And it ends the Geico 500. Well, he stayed out. We talked about it. Bad communication may have won that race. Kyle Busch is your winner, but he's going to have to make it around here to the start finish line. Hey, stay safe. You got to tell us you got to make it all the way back around. That's right. <laughs> he can coast from here. He's good. He's got it. Oh. Kyle Busch is your winner. How about it? <laughs> Left. Up here, I work. Unbelievable. 62nd career win for Kyle Busch. Second win here. Second win of the season. Ryan Blaney comes home second. Chase Briscoe, after bringing out the caution on lap 42 on pit road, rebounds for third.
Chris Buescher fourth, Eric Jones fifth. Brian Priest released from the infield care center. Well, we talked about it. That 23 car was loose. It's been loose all day long with people pushing him. Huge pushes come out on the bumper of this thing. Watch Blaney gets on him and pushes him. The car gets light, cannot keep it underneath of him. And he's watching everything that's going on behind him. He's not looking out front. He's looking out back on where that 12 is trying to go. Big block there. Now he moves up. Blaney was ready to go. At the end of the day, Blaney was going to make that move on him. He couldn't keep it behind him. Tried to block low, tried to block high, got wrecked. Here's the thing. You, you got to, if you're the 23 car in Bubba, you've got to make those moves. You don't, you don't have a choice. You're trying to win this race. Absolutely. And then the flip side of that, if you're Blaney, you have to make that. It's the yep. last lap. You got to go. Exactly. So this is this is just one of those no fault scenarios where everybody did exactly what they had to to give themselves the best opportunity to win this race. And NASCAR has adjusted third place, giving it to Chris Buescher with Briscoe fourth. There's the contact and the spin. And you might say Kyle Busch steals another one. But Kyle put himself into a position to win right here on the bottom. Well, I don't know through. if he intentionally put himself there. Well, I don't know if we're going to call it that. But we've always said it in motorsports from day one. Sometimes you got to be lucky, better lucky than good. You know, it, you well, just got to get opportunities like that once in a while. I know it, Bubba. It was close, buddy. But no cigar. This guy stole it. Stole the show. Stayed out. Actually truthfully told was told to pit 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 we're not going to make it on fuel stayed out landed right in his lap worked out this time and even on the caution lap they wanted him to save fuel to make it to the line for the win to be official it's the 13th win here for richard childress racing one behind hendrick motorsports and nascar continuing to work on the finish uh, we have the top four officially as Bush, Blaney, Busher, and Briscoe. Now Keslowski has been added as the fifth place finisher. So great day for uh, RFK Racing, third and fifth. Jamie Little. Well, Kyle Bush, he's waited 15 years to get back to victory lane here at Talladega. A lot of wrecks in between, but you're able to pull it off today, Kyle. How did you miss all of that and sneak away with it? <laughs> Sometimes you got to be lucky, um, you know, and, and some of these races come down to that and uh, you got to take them when they come to your to your way. And, you know, the seas kind of parted there um, when they went up the racetrack and they're trying to push draft and um, these cars are just not stable enough to do that. I seen the 23 just turn a little bit sideways and I was like, get out of the way, just miss it and uh, and try to see if I was ahead of the 12 by the time it was called, you know, but um, just to great day for another new sponsor at RCR with uh, McLaren Custom Grills. If you ain't got a custom grill yet, these McLarens are pretty bomb, so you got to check them out. And um, we have a great time being able to come out here and race and, and be a part of Team Chevy and, and Chevrolet and get this Camaro in victory lane. A lot of talk at the end about fuel and who was going to run out. How close were you and how much did you have to work inside the car to make it to the end? Well, it shut off right here when I was trying to do a burnout, so I, maybe it's out. Um, you know, I I went left instead of going right, fuel pickups on the right, so maybe I, I ran it out, but um, I'll see if it fires to get back. But yeah, we were sweating it being close, um, but I thought back to California, Fontana earlier this year where we have a win, and I'm like, we got to gamble. Like, we're up here, you got to take the track position when you have it and go give it what you can on the restarts and see what happens. And uh, lo and behold, it, it worked out. So uh, knock on wood for this one. Kyle Busch wins at Talladega.